All right? There's a lot of question out there about, you know, things that happen within society, especially, you know, this, this is something that I think a lot of white people need because not because we're more racist than anybody else. We just get just the, the consequences of us fucking up is so much harsher than other people because, uh, you know, we, we are the gold standard when it comes to racist. <laughs> we are in the driver's seat right now. We have been in the driver's seat for a while basically meaning that if we are ignorant assholes, it, it has way more effect than when other people are. You know, back in the day when other people were running shit, that's the thing. Whoever's on top, if you're thinking ignorant, uh, that's, that's why, you know, if you're on top and you're thinking ignorant shit, you have to be called on it because uh, just because the, the effect that you can have. You know what I mean? Like if somebody from Bangladesh fucking hates me, that's such a stupid example, Okay. That, that's not a race of people. I don't even know where Bangladesh is, and i got to be honest with you, I don't even know if that's a city or a country. Bangladesh. Have you ever seen that on uh, The Price is Right? You know, a showcase showdown. We're selling you to Bangladesh. And some white trash person like myself sits there with a the confused look on their face like, I don't know where that is. Is that where the terrorists are? I don't want to go there. Whatever. Like if Filipino people fucking hate me, that doesn't affect my life. It doesn't. I'm not going to go into a job interview at, 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 you know, Walmart is not run by Filipinos. You know what I mean? You know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Filipinos. All right? See, see what I have to do right there as a white person? Don't say I'm saying anything bad about Filipinos. Just be clear here. I have never had issues. I don't have a blah, 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 blah. Fucking all that shit. You got to go to the Jerry Lewis voice there. Lady. Um, so, yeah, people have questions. So here we go. And I think all races should chime in. The questions that you have, if you have feelings about a different race of people and you just think you're thinking something funny, there's nothing malicious, but is this offensive? Is it racist? This is, this is the new topic, okay? And if you feel that I answer these questions like the ignorant white man that I am, uh, call me out on it. Um, here, so here we go. This first one. Uh, Bill, is it racist to call Indians dibu-dabus? And I'm talking about the Asian ones, not Native Americans. I'm, I'm guessing by... Dibba-dabba, you mean dibba-dabba. dibba you saying like that? Dibba-dabba. Um, is it racist? Probably. But it's fucking funny. So that knocks it down a little bit. This is what I feel that makes something like racist. It's like, like the reason why uh, that one isn't as offensive is because we haven't, we never enslaved them. That's the reason why white and black shit is so sensitive is because of the shit that we did to them but we haven't really fucked with those people you know so if the black version of that was is it is it offensive to call black people hey man motherfucker or whatever yes that would be offensive <laughs> if you did some sort of mocking of the way they spoke yes that would be that would be offensive if some ceo was giving a speech and I was driving, uh, actually, I was having someone else drive my town car. <laughs> and we drove by a group of, uh, yo, motherfuckers. And uh, they proceeded to walk towards, yeah, you'd have to apologize. So I guess, yeah, I guess technically, like that would be, <laughs> that would be offensive. Is it racist? Um, this is what I, I really, I really, it's hard for me to say because it, it had, it's what's in your heart, you know? Because I make fuck, I really, I make fun of, of everybody, you know? I mean, I play a game out here uh, when someone is making, uh, let me ask you, I got a question for you. Is this racist? I have a game out here when I ride around with Nia, and she does not approve of this, to keep her in the clear. She does not approve of this. When somebody makes a moronic move in front of me, you know, driving, you know, just makes a fucking horrific move, I play a game called Old or Asian. <laughs> And you have to guess when, because I'm going to pass the person because I got to see what they look like. You know, whenever somebody does something fucked up, some comedians do a great joke about that. You just want to see what the fuck they look like, right? Uh, that's the game, old Asian. So as I speed up my little hybrid to try to pull parallel to them, I always say, what do you say, Nia? What are you going with? Old Asian. What do you got? Old Asian. She goes, I'm not playing this game. That's mean. And then I was going, I'm going to go with old. And then I pull up. Oh, it's fucking Asian. You know, or, oh, I nailed it. It was an old guy. So um, is that racist? I'm sure it's offensive, but within the context of my own car, you know, I'm not yelling at anybody. And I got to admit, you know, there's a lot of truth in the fucking game. Yeah, Jesus, I'm going to have to apologize next week on the podcast. So I would say that uh, Indian people, why don't you chime in? 
I would say that, yeah, that they would find that, they would find that uh, offensive. Um, is it racist? Let me see if I can use it in a sentence here. Hey, uh, you know, I, I called up customer service and, uh, you know, one of those doobadabas answered and tried to tell me that his name was Steve and act like he was in uh, Kentucky. But I, I know that he was actually in India because when he talked, he was going, Dibba Dabba, what? How can I help you? Um, is it racist? Probably. You know what? Something bad has to happen between white culture and uh, or, or Western culture and uh, Indians. So you know what I mean? It's like uh, it's like you're playing a team and there's no rivalry. Like Patriots versus Jets this year was like uh, whites and blacks. It was bad. It was a lot of hate, you know? But, like, Patriots versus, like, the fucking Lions, you know? Yeah, there's going to be some shit talk. It's, it's knocked out. But it still hurts if somebody says something mean. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right, let's move to the next one. The next one on the new controversial topic on the Monday Morning Podcast. Is it racist? All right, here we go. Um, Bill, I had an interesting experience today, apparently involving me as a racist. I was walking with two of my coworkers who are both black. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Um, we were going to go get some lunch. One of my coworkers, who I'm also friends with, uh, uh, did a little high-five fist bump shuffle with one of the female sec security guards at the front desk. Knowing both of them and how they interact with one another, I kind of made a in passing comment to the tune of, man, you guys in your handshakes while obviously laughing, <clears throat> laughing, while obviously laughing at just how choreographed it was and more or less picturing them in a studio or something working out the logistics to get the fucking handshake perfect. Anyways, we all laughed and moved on and we got our lunch. All right, so nothing wrong yet. So you're cool with these people, you made a joke, and everybody laughed. No problems. No problem so far. Um, however, after coming back through, uh, back through security, I noticed the security guard stopped me and kind of had a scowl on her face. I thought she was mad at me for something, but it turned out she was mad at this other lady who was black because she overheard my comment and was telling uh, that security guard that she couldn't believe I had the nerve to say something like that and I should be ashamed. Also to the point where she could... Um, almost to the point where she could actually go cl complain to the human resource people because she was offended, um, et cetera, without even considering that maybe, just maybe, I was talking about the security guard and my co coworker and not all black people. Now, it being corporate America and all, I'm sure rather than even face the pos possibility of any bad press, they'd rather just sweep me out the door and completely ruin my re any reputation that I may or may not hold at the company just to save their own asses. I feel I did nothing wrong and had no intentions of ever doing anything wrong, anything wrong. I'm not going to go on and on about how I kiss black babies and try to rehabilitate inner city schools because I don't. But I'm certainly not some corn-fed, rebel flag-waving, ignorant product of what might be incest. I guess my question is, do we really have to walk on eggshells when we are just making casual conversation that just any – that just any cunt can pick apart, select the context that they might think it is in, and then start crying foul. Basically, I would have liked to call that woman a cunt and told her to go fuck herself. But let's just say I was already kind of worried about my job. All right. See? Um, yeah, I think this is, this is the classic one where you were fucking around. The other two people knew you were fucking around, but then one person just decides to get offended, and then you have to go on TV and apologize, which personally I think is the wrong move because when you apologize, now it's like you're, you're admitting that you meant it in a bad way. I mean, the apology I would do there is say, look, you know, I'm sorry that you didn't understand that I was joking, but I'm not going to sit here and apologize like I have any, any sort of ill will coming your way, you know, but, I, but just to avoid the problem, in the future, uh, white people do not use the expression "you guys" or "you people" <laughs> when talking about black people. That's just—it's it, just not going to—you're you're setting yourself up for someone to get offended. And um, there's a weird sort of uh, push-pull going on with that whole uh, "you guys" and "you people" thing. 
where um, when somebody white says that, there becomes this concern of um, <clears throat> that you're separating. You're separating, like yeah, you know, you people over there with how you live your lives, and we're over here. Black people have that weird relationship with white people where they're like, you know, can you stop stealing our fucking music and our culture? And, but then, like, if something, you know, hey, let's pave the streets, you know? Well, make sure you do it in our neighborhood. We're all in this together, right? All of us together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's that weird sort of fucking push-pull thing going on. So, yeah, just avoid uh, avoid the whole fucking, um, yeah, you fucked up. You didn't fuck up, but. You, you left yourself open for a sucker punch by saying, you guys, you know, uh, that's, I guess that that's what it is. I don't know. That's, that's, that's my, I'm basically a white guy telling a white guy how he fucked up. So black people, if you're listening to this thing, uh, please, please help me out here. Did I basically get it right? Is that essentially it? And I know most people wouldn't get offended. All right. So there you go. That's the new, that's the new topic. Is it racist? And I would love to hear. Um, some honest comments from uh, non-white people about their thoughts. You know, the fucked up ones too, okay? Because I've watched enough Spike Lee movies to think that evidently it's just us, but I've hung around enough people from different races to realize, oh yeah, everybody's like this. Wrote in to ask me if they thought that this, if, if this was like a racist game. They said, Bill, I'd like to play a little game similar to your Asian or old person driving game, except my game involves the, the evening news. It's called Beaner, Black Guy, or Crazy Ass Cracker. Just to clarify, I am Hispanic, parentheses, Latino, Mexican, or whatever other dumbass term someone has come up with. So saying Beaner is okay. See, now this is why I wanted to do this segment. This is the exact fucking reason. Okay, he says Beaner, Black Guy, and Cracker. All right? And he goes, I can say Beaner because I'm Mexican. Well, then why can you say Cracker Ass Cracker? Right? It's because I'm white and no one gives a fuck about that one. See what I'm saying? This is something that I learned from doing stand-up in front of all different kinds of people. That's what I learned. I learned that everybody basically, it's not that they're selfish. They, they just, they look out of their own head. You can't help but do that. So you just see shit from your own perspective. Like one night I was doing this gig, right? Down at the old Boston Comedy Club in New York City. And one of the acts that was going up was this, uh, was this, I think I told this story before. It was a, it was a comedy team. It was this Asian guy and girl. And they went up there and they did this fucking rap, okay? And they went up there and they stuck their teeth out like they had buck teeth. And then they put, you know those glasses that you can put on, those joke ones that make your eyes look Asian? They had those, they're Asian, and yet they still put those on. And then the other guy had on a, a, a fake gold chain with a fucking fortune cookie hanging off the thing. So I'm sitting there looking at them before they're going up going, oh, man, this isn't going to fly. This isn't going to fly with this fucking crowd. This is basically... Uh, what do you call that shit? What, what was that shit back in the day in old time Hollywood? It was almost like Asian blackface. Like what they were doing was fucking was ridiculous. So I was thinking that black people watching it were going to be like, just all the shit that they've been through would look at it and be like, what the, why are they these fucking, why are they selling out their own fucking race? This is horrific. This is fucking horrific. And they didn't. That act went up there, and they fucking destroyed, and everybody laughed their balls off. They thought the fortune cookie thing was fucking hilarious. And I was just like, yeah, and people, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're shitting on their own race. What the fuck are you supposed to do? I don't know. I just found that shit fascinating. So uh, does that pertain to what the fuck I just said? I don't know. This cold medicine's kicking in. Let me finish this. So anyways, this is basically what this guy does. He says, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Just to clarify, okay, now this game started because I hate watching the news. And no matter what I'm watching, Sports Center usually, my wife will want to change it. Um, so naturally, being the asshole that I am, I had to figure out a way to ruin it for her. Um, so what I do is turn away from the news whenever they begin, begin explaining the crimes or events of the day. Based on the description of the crime or event and how it was committed or performed, I yell either beaner, black guy, or crazy-ass cracker. Dude, that actually sounds like a fun fucking game. Well, I wouldn't say crazy-ass cracker. I would just say fucking white dude. Um, example, news report says, would I say beaner? No, I wouldn't. That's one of the worst ones ever. Beaner. It's got no ring. It's got no flow. That must have been a bad day with white people. You know, usually we're a lot more creative than that. You know, name you after a fucking vegetable. Is it a vegetable? Is it a fruit? What the fuck is it? I don't fucking know. Anyways, <clears throat> Plowhead. Example. News reporter says a man was stabbed, and I yell out, Beaner. 
I know it's a beaner because we Mexicans can't afford guns and still pay for our illegal extended family members we have living with us in our two-bedroom house. If the news report says a drive-by shooting, I yell, black guy. Come on, do I really have to explain the reason behind that one? And, of course, if I hear the suspect had body parts of his victims in the refrigerator, fucking crazy-ass cracker. It's because of this game that my wife has stopped watching the news altogether, and I now have peace and quiet to enjoy my top plays of the day fix on SportsCenter. Well, good for you. Good for you. Now, see, that's something I don't, I don't think that that's racist because what you, you don't have any hatred towards any of those groups. What you're doing is you're actually – you don't want to watch the news. It's fucking depressing. You want to watch sports, and then she puts on a bunch of depressing shit, and what are you going to do, sit there and get depressed, or are you going to fucking entertain yourself? So you turn it into a fucking game. It's actually a, uh, you know, I'm not offended by it. I think that's fucking funny. And there's a lot of truth to it. Um, oh, here's a guy responding to the Dibba Dubba. Um, is that racist? Um, anyway, so yeah, Indians aren't big white people fans because the British controlled their country for hundreds of years. See that once again. See, we all can make ignorant statements. So then you should hate the English. Why do you hate all white people? See that? We're all just as dumb. Oh, God damn it. This, this, is, this is enjoyable. All right, let's plow ahead here. Something I, I, I remember reading about this. I'm going to give you a vague description of what I remember. This is classic for my podcast because nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about. See this? This is how we're all coming together. Um, yeah, the British were fucking over the Indian people, and Indian people did something. They finally fucking snapped, and they went off, and they did something really violent to uh, some of the British people who were over there, including women and children, I believe. And uh, they went, say, you know, we'll say one to ten evil. They went about five. And then England said, oh, yeah, we'll fucking show you what evil is. And then they came back and they went 15. And they were, like, fucking burning people alive. They just went around just just shooting everybody. Um, Which is what you have to do when you fucking occupy a country. You have to commit fucking genocide. That's the only way, which is why you shouldn't do it, you know? That's why you shouldn't fucking invade another country. Because they ain't fucking leaving. They ain't fucking leaving. So I don't know what the fuck. You know what? This is like, that's part of a whole nother big dis- uh, discussion. I shouldn't even have fucking brought it up. But the only occupation I've ever seen that ever fucking worked was in this country. And the reason why it worked was because we weren't leaving and we fucking committed genocide. That's the re- And I'm not for that on any fucking level. Which is why when I look around the world and I see certain people in certain areas... I'm not surprised with what the fuck's going down, because that's what always goes down. That's what always fucking goes down. It's fucking, uh, I don't know. It's fucking, it's evil. It's pure fucking evil. Um, so right there. Right there. Okay, here's a couple of re- revenge stories. Um, all right, Bill, saw you at the Stress Factory. You're the only white guy I've paid to see there. Great. Uh, thank you. I think. I love when black guys say that. You know, you're the funniest white boy I've seen. Uh, thanks. Usually, I think you guys suck. Yeah, just openly. Oh, shit, somebody dropped the fucking N-word. First time. First time this year, somebody dropped the N-word to me after one of my shows. You guys ever see that bit I did about being in Nashville? And that guy dropped the, the N-word out of fucking nowhere? And he didn't even look around. He said it like he was saying the word, like, chair or something. And I got all fucking panicked and I didn't know what to do. Every once in a while, that happened to me in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee, Raleigh, North Carolina, and now uh, Tampa. This is all over the last, like, four years. So this time, uh, it was after one of my shows, this dumb broad who wouldn't shut the fuck up the whole show, and she kept standing up, and she had blonde hair that was sort of like a short haircut, and so she ended up looking like Glenn Close in The Natural. She kept standing up. And uh, so at the end of the show, she had to come out to me. Oh, this is your sir. Yeah, sir. I think you're funny. She's all fucking drunk. I'm like, okay, sweetheart. Okay, and like, you know, I'm selling my DVDs, and as she would go to the left of the table, I would go around to the right, you know, and then she'd go to the right, I'd go to the left. I'm basically keeping a piece of furniture in between us because, you know, those fucking girls, when they get drunk and they come up with that red wine breath, it's fucking horrific, you know? So she comes up to me, and I'm like, okay, 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 I'm glad, I, I get it. You had a good time, you weren't trying to disrupt the show, even though I told you to shut the fuck up 15 times. I get it. She goes, no, you don't understand, you don't understand. You're one of my favorite comedians. I like you, and I like Cat Williams, even though he's a N-word. <laughs> I just looked at her. I go, did you just say 
And then she looked at me. I go, all right, you have a good night. And I just walked away. That's my new thing I do. The first time, when it first used to happen, I used to kind of stare at the floor with my eyebrows up, not looking at them like, okay, what the fuck? This is really happening. And then I went through this middle phase of trying to uh, change the person's views, trying to tell them why they shouldn't say it. And I realized that's a fucking waste of time. You know what I mean? Like, I, like you have to, like, fuck. I mean, this, it's like the person was, like, 14 or 15 saying it, and they had hope. This person was, like, pushing 40. It's over. You know? That's like the uh, fucking America right now. We think we're going to go into Iraq and drop some fucking Starbucks and cheesecake factories over there, and those people are going to stop. And it's over. They're, not, they, they're, they're doing what the fuck they're doing. They don't like each other, and we should let them just fucking work it out. So I just look at those. I just Now I just go, like, I, I just clarify what they say. Did you just say this? And they either say yes or just look at me, and I just walk away from them. Uh, so I walk away, and then I'm talking to somebody else, and then all of a sudden she comes staggering up again. Oh, wait, wait. You don't understand. You, you don't understand. I said, ma'am, I'm done talking to you. Seriously, I'm done talking to you. Walk away. So um, I don't know. I know she's going to wake up this morning, and I'm going to be the asshole. I had a couple of those. I have a lot of problems with women down here in Tampa. I had another girl. Uh, she was just drunk and pissed. She comes walking up to the table. Are you, are you fucking selling a fucking DVD? I got to fucking buy one. You already fucking have it. And I'm just like, ma'am, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What the fuck? My fucking husband wants me to fucking buy the fucking thing. So, and then she was doing that whole thing, coming around to the back. One thing, if I can establish one thing I would love to establish after my shows is if somehow I could get people to respect the other side of the table. You know? I don't mind people come around. They want to take a picture. But the people who come around, people who, who you don't mind coming up to you, never come up to you. They all walk out the door. And then they send you a text. I was going to say hi, but I was shy. Sorry. But the fucking drunks who come up with spittle coming out of their mouth, they just they got to walk right up to your face. What's that Seinfeld? The close talkers? That's what they end up doing. I don't even remember what the I'm, You know, I'm not even drinking. I can't even remember what the fuck happened last night because of this high-voltage tower. I don't know. She just kept coming up to me, and she kept cursing. I'm like, all right, lady. All right. And she goes, no, no, I'm sorry. You come over here and hug me. It's like, no. Get away from me. And then she starts putting her fucking hands on me, you know, and it's just like, you know something, you fucking twat? I don't want you fucking touching me right now, okay? But you don't give a shit because you're a woman and I'm a guy, and this, and it's okay for you to do that. It's not considered anything. If I do it to you, it's fucking some sort of harassment, right? It's your fucking, it's your fucking drunk-ass hands off of me. You're, 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 you're a sloppy mess. Get away from me. You know what I'm doing? I want to put my hand right on her fucking forehead. You know, and right as she reached up to fucking remove my hand, I gave her that little uh, to her head, make that head snap back a little bit. And as right as it was registering that I made her head snap back, I would then like like Chuck Norris swiftly move to the exact opposite side of the tables. Because then I know I know she'd get mad and then start flailing. Oh, my God. You just fucking slapped me in the fucking head. Yes, I did. You drunk cunt. Buy a DVD or don't buy a DVD. But don't fucking don't come up and start fucking cursing me out. I'm not telling you you got to buy the thing. You fucking twat. Beat it. All right. So I got one more show here in Tampa. <laughs> uh, that didn't even make sense. All right, Bill. Hey, Bill, I'm 24 and have four kids. Jesus Christ. What is that, the fucking 1800s? What do you, what do you got? What do you got? Some fucking... You need some farmhand, sir? Somebody go clean out the silo or fill it up? Oh, good Lord. You guys make your own clothes? I'm 24, and I have four kids. I'm married. I feel bad for this guy. I should make fun of him. I work for public utilities doing very hard manual labor, and I work hard for my money, which goes straight to my wife and four kids. Basically, when politicians run for office and they try to stand on the shoulders of hardworking Americans, this is the guy right here. This is the guy that, like, Sam Elliott talks about. Speaking of that, I recently saw one of those Coors commercials. Have you seen that? The Rocky Mountains go down this country like a backbone. And we make our beer the way the fuck we want to, and that's what having a backbone is all about. You gotta have a backbone to make a light beer that looks and tastes like piss. A watered-down, shitty beer that comes from the backbone, Rocky Mountains. You know something? I think whenever you have a pussy product, you know, one of the red flags is you get Sam Elliott to do the voiceover, you know? Because you're like, oh my God, people are going to see right through the fact that I mean, come on, people. Coors, it's one of those beers when, like, you're hungover that you actually drink. That's like vitamin water for an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> no.
they're trying to tie it into the fucking Rocky Mountains. I mean, I know, I know they, they get their fucking water from the Rocky Mountains. Go down this country like a backbone. Tough guy shit. Uh, give me some of that skull band. Uh, Coors Light. Oh, Jesus. Um, anyways. Where the fuck am I? How the fuck did I even start talking about that? The other day I got a call from work. Uh, the other day I, I got a call from her. Okay, let, let's 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 reset this up again. The guy's 24 years old. He has 17 kids. No, he has four kids. He's married. Works for public utilities. Does very hard manual labor. He works his fucking ass off, and all his money goes straight to his fucking wife and his kids. All right. The other day I got a call from her at work, and she told me to meet her at the doctor's office because she doesn't like taking the kids to the doctor alone. When I get there, she starts yelling at me as usual. Red flag. And they and then said. Then she said, all you know how to do is work. So why don't you just go back to work? And saying, all I do is pick up after you and the kids. And basically calling me a loser for working and making money. I'm doing my best to provide for my kids. She takes my money. She spends my money on stupid shit. We've been married for a year and four months now. But you got four kids. Did you have quadruplets, sir? What happened? I don't know, Bill. I'd just like to hear your take on the situation and give me some advice. All right. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. All right. All right. First things first. I don't know what you said before she said, all you know how to do is work, so why don't you go back to work? That could have been anything from her actually being a jerk to her saying, yeah, Philip has a cold, and you said, uh, yeah, uh, which one's Philip? We got so many fucking kids. Which one? Which one is he? Is he, is he the little uh, rusty-haired one? And then she, ah, oh, well, you know how to do his work. Why don't you go back to work? You know, if she said it like that, then what can you do? Um, but it doesn't seem, I don't know. The fact that she's saying all I do is pick up after you and the kids. Uh, this, this is what you need to do. The worst thing that you can do um, when you want somebody to hear your point is to be a fucking asshole like me. It's like when I when I approach that lady at the bank, you know, I I she didn't hear what I was saying because a she's you know a, she's a cunt all right who's kidding who but beyond that was I was a dick to her so no one's gonna listen to you if you're a dick so if you really if you want to stay with this woman right if you're going through a rough period in your relationship what you have to do is you got to walk away from that situation you know. Go scream into a pillow all the shit that you want to say to her or go yell at your windshield as you drive around the block 15 fucking times. A couple of drinks, whatever you got to do. Unwind. And this is how I do it because I have a brutal temper. And just write down on a piece of paper what you want to fucking convey. All right? And then practice it. I know this sounds crazy to, to people who don't have this problem, but that's what I have to do because I, I'll sit there. And like that bank thing, I, would, I, 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 I tried to practice it. My first attempt at practicing, I would start off slow and eventually get pissed <clears throat> all over again. I'd be like, hey, listen, I noticed that when you went in, you know, you opened your car door into my car, and then you came out, and then you did it again, and it's like, what the fuck? You know, okay, wait, no, no, I can't do that. All right, start over, Bill. And each time I would get further and further to the end. So that's what you have to do with this person. You, you, you have to sit down. Hour and 12 minutes. How fucking long is this podcast? You have to sit down with her and just be like, look, I mean, I don't know what you're, you're – just say, listen, we have four kids. That's the situation. You know, the place is going to be a mess, and I am working. Okay, obviously, I'm not giving you what you need. What, what more do you need from me? Okay? Let her – that's a, probably a good way. All right, we need to talk. You seem really upset with me, blah, 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 blah. What more do you need from me than what I'm doing? All right? Since she sees that you're relaxed, you're going to hear what the hell she wants to say. Then when she says what she has to say, you know – Fair enough. All right. Here's, here's what I need from you. All right. And then in a nice way, you got to tell her to stop spending all your money on stupid shit. All right. That's what you got to do. And I'm telling you, the key when you're fucking trying to make some headway in your relationship is with the woman is you can't lose your fucking cool. All right. And they will, if, if you back them into a corner sometimes when they're doing something wrong, because they're humans, they're going to do something wrong. When you back them into the corner and they did something wrong, watch out if they start attacking you. All right. With shit that has nothing to do with what you're arguing about. Like you're arguing about, you know, you know, whatever. Like you, you fucking, um, she keeps leaving the TV on and going to bed and it's on all night. And she's fucking whatever. 
whatever the fuck that debt causes, the, the electric bill to go up, if all of a sudden she starts going, well, you know, you're just mad because you're, you know, you're just short or she attacks you for that or some other bullshit or just you're just a fucking asshole right there. She just abandoned her argument, and what she's doing now is she's just trying to make you mad so that she can steer the argument into some other bullshit or just ho hopefully get you to say something so fucked up that it, uh, it just totally camouflages, you know, the bullshit that she did to start the fucking argument, basically. So just keep it cool. You got to sit down. You got to – dude, you got four, girl, you got four kids with this, with this girl. You, you, you're attached at the hip with this woman, okay? So what you want to do is try to have a good time. You're a good guy. You're working your fucking ass off, Okay. She needs to appreciate that, and uh, she has to appreciate that, you know, uh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to fucking whatever the fuck you're doing? You don't want to walk around picking up uh, SpongeBob SquarePants stuffed animals all day, you know? You got to be like, sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. See, this is why I'm not good at it. Sweetheart, you had four fucking kids. The fuck do you think was going to happen? You know, get your tubes tied. Quit bitching at me. See, that's the first pass. That's the first way I would say it. <laughs> And by you get to the end, you just say, listen, you know, I love you. You love me. We have four beautiful kids. We have to work together. It's definitely a trying time at being this young with all these kids, but blah, 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 blah. And I'm telling you, your, your, your life will be like, it'll be better. It'll be better if you work it out. But the worst thing you want to do is come and hurt after you've had a few pops and said, listen, let me tell you something, you dumb cunt. All right? I'm the backbone of this fucking country. You don't want to come at her that way. All right? You stupid bitch. I'm fucking working my balls off. Why don't you go out there on that goddamn fucking oil rig all day? You know? Why don't you go down to the pharmacy and get on the fucking pill? Maybe you wouldn't have to be picking up so much shit, all right? Or they'll let me know to pull out. You say dumb shit like that, you know, and then you're going to have a fucking horrific relationship. You don't want to do that. So that's it. That's the podcast for this week, everybody. And My grandmother's going to be 99 in October, and she's still dressed. That's good. She's still Why? Dressed. Why? Is she still fuck? I think when she was like 75. <laughs> yeah, then that would be impressive. You know, you know, 99, like that's not impressive. You know what that's like? No, it that's isn't. like handing a child a loaded gun and going, he's had it for four days and hasn't shot himself yet. No, it's not. The kid scenario is funnier. Hold on. We got it. That's not true, though. She has over 75 years of driving experience. That doesn't show up to experience. Jimmy's Are on, you joking? I don't ride with her. Jimmy's on to something here, though. Ooh. We all have an old relative that we brag about. Mine was a great aunt. She finally passed at 101, and I used to say and she lives alone she still lives alone and she goes shopping right. at the corner and you're like that was the second half of my story really? <laughs> yeah. but we all do it she still does well i think it's because she plays bridge that but, keeps her mind so yeah clear. but we all do that we have that relative we brag about right. jimmy i'm hit it right on the head really impress us does she still fuck does she still like skydive does she still do real shit i'll bet you she still gives rides to like, like she's probably a nice lady and she'll oh, probably no, still no. pick up a hitchhiker occasionally and pull over and suck his cock. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, not trying Jimmy, to be disrespectful. Jimmy, that's, that's, oh, my grandma. No, no disrespect. That's Sorry, my she's, 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 she's a woman. More she's, importantly. Well, how would she get that done, though, Jimmy? <laughs> you know, we're just talking about someone's grandma. She'd probably be driving along and, oh, look at the young man. Looks like my grandson. <laughs> he probably that's shouldn't the radio be in the walking. Car. <laughs> it's going to Jimmy, rain. Jimmy, don't do that to me. I don't want to picture my grandmother blowing me. But she pulls over, oh, and God. the young guy gets in, and she talks, and my grandson looks like you. He's he tells jokes. He's on TV. Oh, oh, He's very funny. <laughs> Young man, why are you looking at me and rubbing your crotch? What can I do for you? Let me tickle your bippy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Fast forward five minutes bone, later. Their bony old hand. The car is, knuckles coming at the you. The car is pulled over. The teeth are on the fucking the dashboard. The baker is pulled over. The teeth are on the dashboard. And the, the, the two fingers are working the balls and asshole. And this is the noise you hear as the hitchhiker's head pushes that head onto the car. <laughs> Uh, you have to let me up to breathe. My sinuses aren't what they used to be. Oh, shit. My grandson's on television. <laughs> Why are you doing this? That's horrible. He's right. It really yeah. isn't. It's funny, and I don't give a fuck. I mean, Holy Bills. Shit. I'm just saying in general. But yeah. We're all sick of hearing how great your old relative. Is. I never said she was great. You're I was like, gonna start you thrashing like, her. And she still drives. No, but I didn't. We all do it. I never did. I didn't go. And she still drives. I go. And she still drives. She still drives. We all do it. You know, I can't day, but does she still with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does she fuck, but she looks back over the shoulder and taunts you if it's not hard enough. Ninety-nine years young. Fuck me harder. She wants a hard cock. Comes out just covered with baby powder paste. <laughs> look at look at this ass. That's right. I'm ninety-nine years old. <laughs> she oh. can't get wet anymore. She has to rub her armpit to get sweat and rub it on her pussy. Oh my god. I mean, I'm just. I know disrespect. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just want to make it official. Uh, I'm out.
Oh, is that disgusting? <laughs> Rub a little armpit sweat, huh? Yeah. You know all the fucking games. Right, as the hitchhiker receives his cock sucking. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't look at Bill. Why do no. we do this break on CBS? <laughs> yeah, just wanted to fly. Oh, wow. You all right, Bill? Uh, no, I'm good at blocking out my emotions. <laughs> I know. Six years from now, Bill's just going to walk up and knock my teeth out. Well, he <laughs> should. Hey, Bill. Yes. <laughs> That's the sound it makes when Bill's fist hits my teeth. <laughs> it's a new sound. Rankus. Rankus. And your head has to come up. If your head doesn't come up, you've done it wrong. Oh, wow. Survival. Well, there's a lot of questions coming in about Billy's grandma. I just read it. Is there? Mike from Vancouver oh. wants to know if uh, Billy's grandma oh. is a size queen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I just a what? A size queen, you know. What is that? It means that she prefers a bigger, girthier <laughs> big, cock. fat one. <laughs> like a small, like she only they gets all two. Just, just goes after big ones. But though. she like, a size queen means like, when, when she sees a, like a cock, it's fine. But if it's a two-fister, <laughs> if she can get two hands around it and get the, the fucking mushroom head in her mouth, she appreciates a bigger cock. I think they all do. Scarecrow from Jersey, can you imagine how the dentures of an 80-year-old cocksucker smells when it's roasting on the dashboard? <laughs> Not as bad as the dentures of one who's 99. That's almost 20 years more of cocksucking. And she still drives. <laughs> how about that? She still, you guys, you know, sucking a dick at 99 is not nearly as impressive as still driving. <laughs> no? No, it isn't. Gotta give that a little thought. What she, all she got to do is fall forward. <laughs> the armpit line made me drool on myself. That's coming in from Whack Bag. Uh, Do the same to her. Oh, my God. No. That is hilarious. No. no. All right. I'm not yeah, trying to say that. My grandmother is not a whore. I'm not trying to say that. No. She doesn't, no, no, she no, doesn't no, pick no. up hitchhikers. Well, let's, you know, Hump X writes, uh, my 80... Oh, God, is it updating fast today? That's good. That means uh, people are listening. My 82-year-old mom drove just fine until she plowed into a parked car, which she, which she swore moved out in front of her. Say, she should have just stayed home and sucked a cock that day. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Does Bill's grandmother enjoy scat? <laughs> <laughs> Bill from Waterford. She asked for it because she thought it was like when you sing a shooby doo a doo wop a doo wop. She <laughs> like said, "I scat man." <laughs> yeah. She's like, "I want some scat," and then the meter man shit in her mouth. <laughs> wow. yeah. Do you like scat? Yeah, I, I love Louis Armstrong. <laughs> Great. This is gonna be the color of it. Bow. So he laid her back and put something that looked like Louis Armstrong's leg on her face. <laughs> This is all fun, but we're all going to have to be outside oh. in the bright sunlight. That's when it gets to us. Yeah. It isn't even that How bad. How awful we the really walk. are. It's not that bad. It's just walk a very thing. simple. We got their the urgent communique. All those Christmas hugs. No, no. Just trying to figure out what to do next. We, we can take a break. The comedy premises in the, in the business. <laughs> old people fucking. We've latched on to it. But it's not yeah. old people fucking. It's, it's, it's an old person being my fucked grandmother. hard by the young. <laughs> it's my grandmother, Jim. By the young. Not even fuck, being deep dicked. <laughs> That's what a size queen wants. She wants to be deep dicked. Well, it gets it gets worse. Ass wipe. <laughs> hey guys, I gotta tell you about this time I fucked a lady that's 69 years old. Uh, I'm a truck driver, and uh, of course you are. Of course you are. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, how old were you at the time? <laughs> His blow up doll is 30. <laughs> so about 30. About 30. So 39 years <laughs> older. <laughs> and she, uh, we can't fire anybody because it's age discrimination. And so they put her with me. And I'm laying in my bunk, and I feel her pull over. She comes back there, and she starts laying down with me. Next thing you know, she's rubbing my cock, and it's been a while. And so, so uh, I gave in and let her rub my cock, and I ended up fucking her. Oh, God, I can't believe I just told you this. Anyway, see ya. 69 years old. Uh, I could see going with the hand job and kind of looking the other way and thinking about someone for oh, that gnarly no, that old charm board. bracelet noise. Oh, <laughs> a grandchildren charm. <laughs> I have it's eight grandchildren. It's actually a rosary. Shinka, 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 shinka. She's trying to spit in her. She's trying to spit in her hand like particles of food are coming out. Oh, oh God! Hurry up! Just jerk me off. Used to be relevant. <laughs> she spit out a chunk of dentu grip and it sticks to your cock. <laughs> She's wearing I like Ike panties. <laughs> oh. uh. When she sucks your dick, she leans up and asks you if you could reach around and finger her bippy. <laughs> she likes that. <laughs> the bippy. Give the old bippy a fingering. Oh. Oh. There's nothing sexy about fucking the old. No. Not nothing. at all. Uh. 
This conversation is really not hot. Yeah, good deep fuck. <laughs> good womb buster. Give her a good womb busting. A womb busting. <laughs> he is long uh, gone. Well, the listeners are loving it because we just crashed in some feedback. They all have questions oh, about gone. Bill's grandma. <laughs> they want to know if she's slow. <laughs> Oh, that's not right. Oh, Dude, they're just vicious. I can't oh, read them. I one time sucked the cum out of Agnes's pussy and then kissed her. <laughs> oh, we we had a foursome with oh. Gus and Elmer. <laughs> Elmer. Yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, God. Did he 69, the 69-year-old? I'm so glad. No, none of my relatives on that side of the family have an XM. What, what, what are you yeah. laughing at? Jimmy from Wagbag, her asshole must look like a brown scrunchie. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, is that horrible? Oh. Uh, wow. Oh, God. All right. Damn Who it. I thought such an innocent comment could just... Yeah. <laughs> I know. Just hey, she's uh, 99 and she uh, can still drive. And turns into yeah, I was going to make fun of because she drove the car through the garage, and next thing you know, I'm picturing what her asshole looks like. <laughs> yeah. You know. Should we celebrate her 100th birthday with a pair of non-white balls on her face? <laughs> <laughs> Not black, yet a, some type of a brownish hue. <laughs> I imagine that would be much better than blowing out a cake with 100 candles. <laughs> Perhaps Ecuadorian, the Ecuadorian landscaper. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> fucking awful onion balls. Go ahead. Put them in your mouth. <laughs> Is she fucking Carlos Mencia? <laughs> I work in the TV industry. I'm a I know famous. what you're thinking. <laughs> oh, God damn. You finally gave a beaner a load. <laughs> now, let's say hi to Eric in Colorado as we try to move on here. Eric. Yes, uh, I, I believe for anyone interested that with a wild sticker, Bill's grandmother will be flashing at his show at Comedy Works in Denver, July 27th, 28th, Ooh. and 29th. Little for ticket fun. information, contact www.comedyworks.com or myspace.com slash Bill Burr. Yeah, all his dates are up on his MySpace account. Comedy Connection this weekend. That's a biggie for Bill. Nah, I'll be, I'll be oh, you're from Boston. It's first time you're headlining. That's huge for Bill Burr. Mm. I'm taking the weekend off after this segment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Not going out. I don't have to have that men in black thing flashed in front of my eyes. <laughs> so you forget? Yes. Uh, flash it in front of your eyes so next time you see your grandma, it's not the first thing that pops in your head? Yeah. It's all the awful <laughs> things that are being said. You're not going to look for body language signals when she's hugging you? <laughs> does she press a little too close? Does she Instead of like, giving you the grandma the hug, does she wrap her arms around your waist, pull you in? Jimmy, for the love of God. <laughs> well, Humpax, you stop. Humpax <laughs> wants to know... Would Bill's grandma consider a DP session? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like her motto. If you're going to have one in the pussy, you might as well have one in the asshole. And then she puts her fingers over her mouth and goes, Did I say that, Dolores? See? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, for the love of God, Jimmy. <laughs> Two yellow fingernails over the mouth. See? <laughs> Frank the trucker, Frank. <laughs> Fucking under an Afghan. I was too rich for hat. She's like 89, 90 years old, man. I had to do it. Hey, Frank, <laughs> Frank's oh. laughing through a story, but basically he had to fuck his landlord, and she was real oh. old. Oh, Wasn't the, that in Kingpin? Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's, I think he stole that. All the young guys like to fuck the old 99-year-old because she's a cheap date. After you fuck her, you just got to give her some Alpo and tell her something else. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in there, dear? Making a mistake. And you hear the can opener. <laughs> 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 it's meatloaf. Nine grandma. lives. This will help you live longer, oh. you old whore. <laughs> Oh, if she doesn't finger the asshole, oh. she gets hit. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, this is a new low. It really is. Sorry. Uh, Nobody's laughing. making eye contact with me. <laughs> no. You know, it's very hard now to, uh... We're, <laughs> we're using you for really good radio, I gotta be honest. I feel bad, I don't mean that. It's a horrible subject. Yeah, my friend. It isn't, though. At the end of the day. It's true. Let's go to Dave in Tennessee. <laughs> she loves it. <laughs> Dave, what's up? <laughs> hey, good Jim morning, is extra guys. Evil today. Hey, Anthony, it's gonna be a long walk of shame with Bill today. Yeah, Bill, walk with Bill. No, no, he, he, this fucker, he won't even come near me when there's 15 minutes left in the show. He starts crawling under the desk. Mm. Our I last leave. walk out, when that, that was, uh, what was it? Uh, that's it was the Schizo Bill. Yeah, Schizo Bill. That was the last walk. You, I, you. Non-verbally said, "Fuck this guy." I said, "Enough." The second the show's over, you're I dead to me. I can't fucking deal with the walk. 
where where Bill then starts commiserating or trying to commiserate with me about how awful what we talked about yeah. was. Uh, no, 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 not, not what we talked about. It was only a couple times I did it. I did it when uh, that woman was naked crawling over mouse traps. I'm yeah. a very normal fucking person. Yeah. That's very normal to, so are we, man. to, to, to feel that. What are you trying to say? Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. We're normal. You, you're not, though. <laughs> we're normal. No, we're not. Y you're not. You got to be able to just, like, throw that shit out after the show. It's, it. it's done. There was a show. You leave. I want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, she was crawling around in mouse traps. I don't know. You feel like your humanity has just gone down the shitter and stuff. All right, Bill. Yeah, I'm at my car. Let's take it easy. Let's let's go to. Uh, I just want to ruin your ride home. Is that it? It doesn't work. It does though. Yeah, look. It does because you avoid me now. If it didn't, I don't avoid. I I I There's really avoidance. would avoid you. There's definitely. Avoidance. I'll walk with you today. You know what I do every day? Me and you. Every, every day, day I, holding hands. Every day I just go. Well, that was Sandy. fun. Sandy, we're just be holding my life. hands. Oh, not affected at all. Well, that was. I only feel bad if, if we're not mean enough. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Chicago. Howdy, guys. How are you hey, doing? Welcome aboard. Hey, up there, Chicago. We're trying to take a break here, Ryan. What do you got? I would like to ask Jimmy what it would sound like if he was going down on Bill's grandma. Uh, um, do you remember, uh, Jimmy? Yeah. Probably. I would just. What I would do is I would. I would. Um. <laughs> I would slide the. When did he become Michael Winslow? Pans, <laughs> I would slide the pantyhose down. Yeah. I mean, that sound they make when you're like, like, she'd probably land like a child, and I'd pull the pantyhose, and her little legs, as I pull no. them, would lift up in the air, like you pull a baby's fucking, like, snowsuit off. How do you know? That's what her little legs would look like as I pulled them off with her shoes still on. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even take her shoes off. The news would, the shoes would flop off when I pulled the fucking stockings off. Did you suck oh. on her hammer toes? <laughs> oh. And I would fucking, I'd hold her legs back. And I'd, I'd fuck it. I'd open the lips. Easy, Jim. Well, no, 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 God bless her. I'd put my uh, 99 years young. And I'd put... I'd Still driving, too, by the way. Of course she this is. This is what started this Who do you thing. think picked me up and took me to the motel? Uh. <laughs> and she paid for it. Fucking the, <laughs> a threat of a good slap. <laughs> like her paying for the hotel is going to make the story worse. Yeah. I know, right? After well, everything that's been said, well, she's an old Ecuadorian's <laughs> ball bag on her face, but she paid for the hotel. You know what what a fucking whore. She's not only fragile, but she's of meager means. <laughs> <laughs> but she'll do anything for a good deep dicking. So then I open up those fucking pussy lips. It's like aristocrats all of a sudden. And I put my tongue by it and I go, Ow. That's how I eat a pussy. Uh, let's say hi to Mike. But you know what the funny part is, Ope? Oh. Uh, she prefers it while she's on her stomach. She likes to, cause she likes the little nose tickle in the asshole while the lips the are being, bippy. while the lips are being <laughs> the slathered. Nose in the bippy. She wants the lips to be slathered. So, Bill Burr, what's going on in the glamorous confines <laughs> of a wonderful uh, New York City cab? Isn't it? Hey, remember when we voted on these, saying we didn't want them? Remember that? So they gave you a headache? Oh. I resent the fact that I have to touch that filthy screen <laughs> and shut it off. Because I don't want to watch it. Right, here we go. Here we go. Watch this. Off. There we go. Oh, but we're going to miss our, our news updates and our AccuWeather forecasts. And... I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's, you know, <laughs> this is what today's economy, this is what it's brought. Right here. This is what kind of economy we're living in. I'm literally getting interviewed in the back of a cab with a guy holding a Viewmaster like this. Am I even in camera? Are you looking to see if I'm in focus? Um, That's the thing about you. You've always been in focus in your family. Nice segue. Thank All you. All right. Charlie Rose here. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go. <laughs> On with the questions. It's all going to be up to me to just riff. It's broad daylight. I'm a comedian. I'm half vampire. I'm not funny I feel like with, these hours. I feel like with your weekly podcast, that is what you do now. Is you just riff and somehow the material is Yeah, I do. Yeah, but, I, but I make sure I have the curtains drawn and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So you're not just one take, I, one take burr. You, no. You prep it out. You. Sometimes I have. Sometimes they suck and I have to start over again. For those of you wondering, I do a uh, podcast every Monday on my website billburr.com, B-U-R-R, -R, and uh, it's also available on iTunes for free. I always say it's for free because some listeners said they found it annoying that I always mention it's for free, and I find it annoying that he brings that up. So it's my own little fuck you to one of my listeners. <laughs> I'm up to 17 at this point. And you've just automatically made this video not safe for work. Thank you. Oh, I can't. I can't say. No, that. you can. Oh, okay. I just need to tell people when they click on it. Oh, Be all right. Because if, if they're at work, where, and where can they see this? <laughs> they can see this on the comicscomic dot com. There you go. Well, and, actually, if they're and, watching this, they're they're already there. But you can put it up on YouTube. Or you? they're on YouTube. Yeah, oh. they'll probably see it on YouTube first, and then not click over. 
because they're cheap. Which means no one's watching this right now. They're just scrolling no. down, looking at everybody writing, "What a fucking douchebag I am." <laughs> do you do you, do you ever get material that makes it from the podcast to stage? Um. Yeah, occasionally, but a lot of it is is just me riffing on people's questions and stuff. So it's not uh, not really stand up kind of thing. You know what I mean? No, you shouldn't, because I just explained that terribly. <laughs> yeah, let me just want to speak vaguely and then look at you and just be like, you know what I mean? You usually can get away with that. Most people just go, yeah, yeah, I do, I do know what you mean. But you didn't. You left, you left me in that lull. It's just more like they're talking about, you know, hey, I got a fucking house plan and a sofa, and then well, what do I do? Well, they, people ask me really random stuff that doesn't fit into my act. Or they send me lists of things that they feel are overrated or underrated. And I don't really go off on... on uh, any of that I don't do like I don't make fun of celebrities like that like them being overrated I just make fun of certain things like shit that they do mm. it just doesn't fit in dude I don't know how many different ways I have to explain this to you <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm just gonna let you dig a hole that's not hard for me to do man I'm, I'm a moron so <laughs> you you mentioned uh, you mentioned over lunch that uh, you don't want to get caught up in Twitter and all the latest oh Facebook and Twitter yeah, yeah fuck all that I'm a, it's the same group of people that were on MySpace right and I jumped up and down and waved at him, tried to add as many as I can, and now they all go over to Facebook, and then what, I'm supposed to run over there? That's what the cool kids do. It's the same guys. It's the same. I'm not adding the same 30,000 douchebags. <laughs> I'm staying where I'm at. If you like what I do, come. You know where I'm at. I'm on the old school MySpace. I'm not fucking chasing you all over the internet, <laughs> twittering you every five seconds. Maybe you should get off MySpace also, and then just, just be at Bill Bird. No, I like MySpace. I like it. I like MySpace, you know what? And eventually, it's all gonna come back around again to MySpace, and I'll be like, I never left. Like that old hippie, still working the farm on Woodstock. <laughs> no, truth is, I'm lazy, and uh, and then the other aspect of it is, I don't like, uh, I just saw a thing at my gym, where they were saying that uh, when you get on Facebook, even if you decide to get off Facebook, there's a whole bunch of your information that they don't erase. They keep it just in case you ever wanna come back, so. I figure that just means more junk mail. So I've already done that with MySpace. Why do I want to get in bed with another one of these fucking whores? So that's how all my points go, there, Sean. Now I know they start off with a little bit of momentum and then they gradually peter out. Now I know I know laziness plays no part in in the speed in which you're working on the next special because once again he does it again. You <laughs> see, you take my shit, you weave it into gold. Because you you were telling me over lunch we had lunch together by the way. It was magnificent. Yes, you did. That. Um, you don't really have to do a special every year, even though it seems like every it, year. No, it seems like it seems like everybody's trying to rush to do the next thing. Yeah, well, I think people work on their own pace, and, and you shouldn't get caught up on how fast someone else is doing it. I think you should put it out there when you're ready to put it out there, but you should try to make sure it's memorable. I think if you just have one memorable special, you know what I mean, um, that you you can ride that for a while. Like people keep coming back as long as you have like new material, and. Um, it's weird, like George Carlin did one every two years and somehow he just kept having one memorable one after another, but, you know, a lot of the greats will have like, you know, one, two, three, they just have that one killer one, you know, which I, I've obviously yet to have. <laughs> That's I wouldn't true. be doing an interview on a handheld whatever well, disposable can... camera in the back of a fucking cab. But that, but that's the thing about all this technology, I get the sense that some comedians feel pressured because of the way fans have access to everything on the internet that they have to come up with new material all the time I don't think you do I think uh, I, I don't think you do I'm holding on to that half of it is because I'm lazy and then the other half is like you know I don't think you you want to get to that point like where uh, I don't know if you I don't understand that Twitter thing if every five seconds I'm finding out what Ashton Kutcher's doing I don't know at some point gonna not give a fuck about him then when he finally has a movie coming out like ah oh, Jesus this guy Every five seconds with the I'm tying my sneaker shit, you know? You left side on that. Left side, please. And yet you do know enough about it to know that Ashton Kutcher is on Twitter every five seconds. Well, why wouldn't he be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's certain guys you just know they're on there. I mean, I thought you were going to give me shit because that's sort of a hacky reference at this point. No, it's spot on. He's my, uh, he's my updated Ben Affleck. Remember when Ben Affleck was everywhere? That's why I don't buy these celebrities when they bitch about the paparazzi because it seems like when they want to be in front of them, they're in front of them, and then all of a sudden, when they don't want to be, they're not.
It's nice to be back here down in the South, man. I had a real weird experience last time I came down here. I was in Nashville, right? Sort of an awkward social situation, right? I'm sitting at this bar. There's this white dude sitting like two stools away. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. And that Terrell Owens story was in like sports news. So I try to make conversation. I'm like, man, look at this guy. This guy just signed a $40 million contract. He's already bitching, man. How much money do you need to make? And the dude looks at me. He's like, you know what I say? And then he looked over his shoulder, which I now know is the telltale sign that the N-word is coming. And it's coming hard. Oh yeah, it's not gonna be pronounced with the A, it's gonna be with the R, and he hit the R, he like stuck the landing. It was like a dismount, clan members high-fiving in the background, like doing the wave. Just out of nowhere, so now immediately I'm looking over my shoulder like, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? I'm waiting for like this hail of black fists to come raining down on top of me. I hate when people do stuff like that. That dude made me part of like a potential ass kicking that I had nothing to do with. You don't do shit like that. He just had that word hot potato, just threw it in my lap. Like, hey. Trying to pass it down to the next white dude. I hate when people do that, man. You know, it's like, dude, feel me out first. Ask some questions. Do you like to fish? Have you ever fucked your sister, right? I start rattling off answers, then you go old school. You give me a pamphlet, you tell me about your militia. Don't just dive into it. That dude was one of the angriest people I ever met. I should have known that word was coming because he was just watching Terrell, right? Anytime I would bring up, look at man, that guy's talking trash. He would just like flip out. He won't shut up! <laughs> you know those people get like so mad they're not even looking at you? Their eyes are up, you just shut up and play the game! <laughs> You know what's funny? I don't even like Terrell, but now I love the guy. Because every time I see him talking trash, I know this idiot in Nashville is just losing his mind, like kicking over his kitchen TV. Shut the fuck up! I like violence, man. I am. I, not, not like when it happens to me or if I see it live. I like watching it on TV, you know? Watching people, you know, get attacked by animals. <laughs> just get blasted in the face or something, you know? Like, I'm a huge sports fan. You know my favorite, like, moment of, like, the last year was in sports? That Detroit Piston, Indiana Pacer, bench clearing brawl. Wasn't that great? That was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I was so confused when I watched ESPN that day. They were like, that was absolutely disgraceful. Basketball fans, they, they, they just must be a bit. I'm sitting there looking like, I'm a basketball fan. I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed watching out-of-shape civilians get the shit kicked out of them <laughs> by professional athletes. It was fascinating. And I think as sports fans, we kind of had it coming, right? Because how many times you go into a game, right? You got a little too drunk, you started screaming at some dude on the field who could clearly kick the shit out of you, right? If you saw him in the parking lot, you'd be like, hey, can you sign my stamp collection? I think you're awesome. You get in the game, you're all drunk, you're like, you suck, buddy! You're a piece of shit! And they're always calling him up, come on up here! No, come on up here! Well, they came up there. They did, and they kicked the shit out of everybody, it was great. It's like a cartoon. You're like beating up whole rows of people at once, like. <laughs> I loved every second. I love how Ron Artest punched the wrong guy. Wasn't that great? He taught that dude a valuable lesson in life. When shit goes down, you don't just stand there like you're watching a movie, like, wow, it's coming right at me. Must be in 3D or something. That was a five foot six inch, 110 pound white dude had an angry six foot 10 inch black dude running right at him. That had to have been in his top three nightmares all time. <laughs> right behind getting his dick cut off and being lit on fire. And he just stood there. He's like trying to explain himself. Well, I still have the liquid in my cup, so there's, there's no way I could have. He's <laughs> an idiot. So I've heard a lot of shit about Connecticut. That, you know, there's, uh, you know, all that J.P. Morgan money, the Blue Bloods. The guys, you know, who, who like, they, their kids haven't worked for fucking generations. Haven't worked since, like, their, their, their initial, uh, since that meeting on Devil's Island, they haven't fucking worked. There's some clan members, higher level, no southern accents, you know, pushing the pawns around. I've heard about that. I've heard that there's a mix of Patriots and Giants fans. And then I heard that there was uh, some rough areas of Hartford. I definitely heard that. But I never heard about New Haven. So, I don't know, I figure it's, it's an Ivy League campus. I figure it's gotta be cool to walk around or whatever. So anyways, I'm like, you know what? 
I know that the Yale Bulldogs play in an old stadium. Just like, yeah, I, I want to go look at it. So I looked it up on Wikipedia and said the Yale Bowl, they're claiming, is actually the original bowl in this country. And that all the other bowls looked at that bowl and said, wow, we want to build one too. And that's how you got the Rose Bowl, the fucking Cotton Bowl, and all those other bowls. And, that's, and then from that, they took the name Bowl for the bowl games because they all played in those fucking stadiums. And then from there, the Super Bowl took the bowl name from that. So it all goes back to this. So I'm like, well, fuck me. i got to go see this thing. So I look on my map, my little Google Maps. I see it's a mile and a half away. I hate going to the fucking gym, right? I had my banana and apple for breakfast. I'll go fucking full of fiber. I'll go take a walk down to the Yale Bowl. Go check this motherfucker out. It's a mile and a half away. I'm in an Ivy League. I'm on an Ivy League campus. This, this, how can I go wrong, right? <clears throat> I got about two blocks in. There's an amazing thing where you suddenly, as a white person, realize that you're walking into the hood. There's those subtle signs, you know, that make you nervous. First thing you see is a, probably a check cashing place. You know what I mean? A funeral home, Baptist church, you know, less white people. And you start going, fuck. And I'm thinking, well, it's only a mile and a half away. How bad can it fucking get? Plus, it's during the day. So I never had a problem during the day. During the day, it's the regular people. It's at night. Right around 7 o'clock. I've always said when that second shift comes out, the hustlers, the zombies, and all that fucking shit, that's when you don't want to be there. But, uh, you know, you might catch a couple of those guys coming home late. You know what I mean? So I'm fucking walking through there, and uh, I got to admit, I got about six blocks in, and I was waiting. I felt like I was in an episode of The Wire. Like I was waiting for Omar ew, to come walking by with his fucking gun. It was crazy. I also figured out why black people walk so slow when they're walking down the street. I get it. Because when you walk slow, you look like you're not nervous, okay? If you're walking fast like I was, you look like either a, a, a narc or a fucking victim. You look like you're scared. People just were staring. I don't know because my fucking red face. I think I'm, I, I really freaked out a lot of people because there was not, nobody down there that looked like me. So I finally got through all this fucking shit. And I get down to the Yale Bowl because I want to look at this thing, thinking it's going to look like the one at Harvard, right? That's basically a ripoff of... Uh, what is that place over there in, in Italy? What, yeah, the, the place where they threw all the Christians to the lions. And that fat guy who was balding. And he'd do the thumbs up, thumbs down. It wasn't Pontius Pilate. He took out the hippie. Julius Caesar? Who the fuck was it? The Roman Colosseum. So I thought it was going to look like that. So I show up to this thing. It's dug into the fucking ground. All I can see is these entrances and that have gates in front of them. And above them is just grass. I couldn't see a fucking thing. So then I had to turn around, and I had to walk right back through the hood. And I was way less nervous the second time, because I knew with each step, I was getting closer to my hotel. It's weird how that works. Then I started looking around, and people looked a lot more friendlier, because I was a lot less nervous. And you know what? I think that's one to grow on. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? is uh, I actually want to go to a, a, a Harvard-Yale game. In, uh, at the Yale Bowl. I want to do that because uh, I started thinking about how many future presidents sat in the Yale Bowl, or at least candidates. You know what I mean? George W. Bush was in there, as was that other fucking guy that ran against him in 2004, John Kerry. You know what I mean? They might have done keg stands together. So I just want to look at drunk kids out there and be like, maybe someday that's going to be my guy who's allegedly my leader. You know? And maybe in the Harvard-Yale game, when they're not giving each other shit and throwing their hankies at each other, I can actually hear, you know, about the next Illuminati meeting. Hey, you know, I'm always bitching about the population problem and how they never fucking bring it up in the presidential campaigns. You know what I think they bring it up? I think they bring it up when that, that Bilderberg group gets together. I think they talk about the real problems, you know, when they all get together and be like, all right, what is the most, what is the easiest way to get seven billion down to 500 million? You know what I mean? As they sit there eating like fucking lobsters and shit. <clears throat> then who fucking serves them? I bet, they, I bet when, you, when you're a waiter for them, when you come walking into that, that group, when you bring in whatever, their fucking escargot and all that shit, I bet they all just shut the fuck up the second you come in or they pull down some different map. And if you accidentally see something like uh, that you're never heard from again. 
Am I slowly losing my mind? I don't fucking know. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I got. Oh, Jesus. 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 The year of our Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gee. Oh, Jesus. Jesus is flying by. It's destroying her relationship with Christ. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, G and Zuz. Oh, Jesus. 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 Jesus there. And oh, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Cock blocked by Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. And all of a sudden, I heard my, uh, my old juice sauce going, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Bubbling over there. I was like, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, ah, and then I'd fuck it up. This might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here. Uh, other than one white Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert sorry when you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. Ever. All right, Sherry's Berries. Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food. Why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dip strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific. And a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. <laughs> Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit, I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's Berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read, and I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um, oh, wiping tears away here. Um, <laughs> and I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This is... I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite name of anything I've ever advertised here, uh, other than one white Charlie's. Uh, Sherry's Berries. It says, insert sorry when you've given or received uh, the gifts. Well, I, I've been out of town. I haven't gotten Sherry's Berries yet. All right, Sherry's Berries. 
Since the end of the, the year is all about delicious holiday food, why not send an extra special holiday treat to friends, family, business associates, associates, everyone you know. I've never met a person who didn't love Sherry's Berries. Send giant dip strawberries from Sherry's Berries for only $19.99. That's over a 40% savings. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and type in Burr, B-U-R-R. For my listeners, double the berries for just $10 more. Berries are terrific and a sweet holiday gift. They also have delicious products such as Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Here's the only way to get this special 1999 Sherry's Berries offer. <laughs> Call 866-FRUIT. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck am I selling? <laughs> Did I approve this? This is fucking ridiculous. Who the fuck is going to buy this shit? This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. Christmas cake pops, cheesecakes, and dipped pretzels. Call 866-FRUIT, everybody. <laughs> Eight, I'm sorry, 866-FRUIT-0-2. Or even better, <laughs> visit berries.com. <laughs> oh, punch truck. Oh, please spell out the words. Oh, by all means, berries, B-E-R-R-I-E-S, berries. Click on the microphone in the top right corner and type in burr. <laughs> you got to see these enormous berries for yourself. Go, I swear to God, this is the copy. Go to berries.com, click on the microphone, and tip in burr. Type in burr. Dip your balls and dip your berries in that. Don't wait now. Order. Order some chocolate berries for the fucking person in your life. Oh, shit. I needed that. That was wonderful. I'm sure I'll get some complaints on that one. We need a conference call. Can't do it. I'm in Helsinki. Hey, you cunts better buy some Sherry's berries because I'm going to get in trouble with that fucking read. And I'm not changing it because that was hilarious. Um... Oh, wiping tears away here. Um. <laughs> and I, my apologies to berries.com. I, I, didn't, I didn't look at the copy before I read that. This, I'm too fucking immature to read shit like that. I'm sure you have wonderful chocolate-covered berries. All right? <laughs> to listen on Spotify, click the link below. Um, all right, so let's get on with the podcast. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, I had the pleasure of performing on the David Letterman Show. And uh, most of you went out, you watched it, and you all sent me wonderful emails about it. And I would read you the wonderful emails, but they're not funny. But you are in luck. You know what ones are funny? The ones where people did not like my performance. So let's read a couple of those, shall we? Um, all right, let's read the hate mail here. So what, what happens with all of, all of my hate mail is um, when people don't like my act is you can't just write me, evidently, and just say that you don't like my act. You don't appreciate what it is that I do on the stage. What you have to do first is you have to establish what an incredible sense of fucking humor you have and how open you are to all different forms of humor. You know? It's that classic thing like those douchebags on YouTube. Obama's a fucking idiot, and I'm a Democrat, Right? So then we can be like, wow, this guy is left, and even he doesn't like this lefty guy. So this is what they do. All right, so here, so these, uh, both these emails follow to a goddamn fucking T to the motherfucking U and V. Um, they follow it. Here, it, They follow that pattern. Bill, just read the fucking thing. Okay, here we go. All right. Hi there. <laughs> this is how this one starts. Starts off nice enough. Hi there. I've been a fan for a while. You seem to have a unique take on things. Look at this, huh? Pat me on the head. Let me sniff her hand, making me nice and fucking relax. I loved your bit about the muffins and the mass vehicular murder. <laughs> so there you go. She just showed how it just, her sense of humor spans the globe. Whether I'm attacking food or actually running over human beings on the sidewalk, she finds it all funny. Though... And here's the rub. Though, as a stay-at-home mom, I now completely despise you. I did this bit about being a stay-at-home mom. Um, so anyway, she says, The hardest part about being a stay-at-home mom is being, respect is being disrespected by everyone. I now hope the worst for you. Despite what funny acts you may think up in the future, you are a jerk 
and deserve the worst that life has to offer. <laughs> I don't fucking, I don't, I don't understand. Like, these, this is the classic fucking person where everything is funny until it comes around to some shit in her life. And I make some fun of some shit that she's doing, being a stay-at-home mom. And now all of a sudden, she goes from being a fan of mine to now I am a jerk and deserve the worst that life has to offer. That's that's a fucking hard course that you deserve the worst that life has to offer. So what, I'm going to get leprosy and uh, be constipated all at the same time and fucking uh, survive a plane crash, but not in a good way, you know? Anyways, I don't fucking know. Really? You're going to take it to that level? So I wrote her back. I said, uh, sweetheart, Oprah Winfrey called your job the toughest job on the planet on national television and got an applause break of approval. How much more respect do you need? I think that's a great point. If I can step outside the email, break the fucking fourth wall. Is that what it is? The third wall? I never knew what the fuck it was. Huh? Oprah Winfrey's on TV saying you have the toughest job on the planet and everybody claps. All right? Did she say being a stand-up comedian is the toughest job on the planet? You think you know what it's like to be fucking disrespected, you apron-wearing, sheltered son of a bitch? Huh? You want to talk about being disrespected? Look at fucking comedians. Anytime they show a comedian in a movie, is it a Chris Rock level comic? It never is. It's the fucking hack with the lampshade on his head going waka waka. Right? Didn't the fucking comedian get shot in his gut during Scarface? Huh? Did a fucking stay-at-home mom get shot in the fucking stomach with that Mr. Potato Head mask on her face during that show? No. You know why? Because she was at home taking care of the fucking kids. Ah, Jesus Christ. I'm just going to read the rest of this email. That didn't even fucking make sense. It started off funny, and then it just went right off the rails. Like a Prius that you can't fucking stop. Um, anyways, uh, she says, so I wrote, I wrote, uh, how much more respect do you need? And then I said, meanwhile, there are children working in sweatshops. Would you rather be a stay-at-home mom or an eight-year-old sewing Adidas together for 16 hours a day? I came up with another great example that I, I wish I had used. On TV, how about how about you work on one of those fucking oil rigs, like those poor bastards who work for BP? Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the fucking thing explodes. You're standing on a metal structure in the middle of the goddamn ocean, and next thing you know, it blows up. Probably blew out both of your eardrums. You're deaf now, and you're on fire. All right, and your only option is either burning to death or jumping off of basically the equivalent of the top of a brownstone trying to enter the water without doing the world's biggest flaming belly flop. <laughs> right? You land in the water, second and third degree burns in salt water. All right? Pus and blood is oozing into the water, and now all you can do is pray to God that the Coast Guard gets there before a sea of sharks eats you alive. All right? You want to do that, or you want to watch Bob the Builder for the 800th time? Lighten up. And then I wrote, oh, and don't despise or hope the worst for me. That causes premature aging. Hugs. I know, that was kind of mean to say, but you know what? Go fuck yourself. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Once again, we have to establish credibility at the top of the email. Are you guys ready for the credibility to be established? Jesus Christ, I know I am. Here we go. Uh, Bill, I am never appalled or, capital letters, offended by comedy that I see and hear. All capitals, this sentence. I have a great sense of humor. Wow, this is unbelievable. Isn't that amazing, podcast listeners? This person is never appalled or offended by comedy that she sees or hears. She has a great sense of humor. She has such a great sense of humor, people, that she had to yell it at me in emails. All right, so there's no way she had a problem with my act, right? Let's read the rest of the email. However, oh, Jesus. Your appearance on the David Letterman show that I just watched just put down women and motherhood to an extent that is just downright unbelievable, dot, dot, dot. Now she's going to yell again, and tasteless. Now she yells for the rest of this email, but I'm going to spare you guys, all right? I'm going to read it in soothing tones, but she's screaming the entire time. That's what I'm guessing because it's all capital letters. Um, this is what she says. I challenge you to be a single parent and raise a child and work and attend college alone without any help. 
just in case you don't know what being a single parent means. All right? Um, you have no idea how hard it really is. I am disgusted with your act and will not ever buy any of your DVDs, etc. <laughs> For the first time in my life, I am disgusted with comedy. Your comedy, that is. I like how she starts speaking like in film noir. I'm disgusted with this comedy. Your comedy, that is. See? Yeah. 23 skidoo. All right. Your act touched on many topics that you were disgraceful and very unappealing. I think she got so mad she stopped writing sentences. Um, first of all, sweetheart, I wasn't making fun of uh, single, pa uh, single uh, parents. If I was making fun of single parents, nobody would laugh. I was talking about stay-at-home moms. All right? You don't remember that line? Hanging out all day, making grilled cheese sandwiches, you're giving a puppet show, you dress like a dragon, and then some other adult comes home and gives you money. You're like a big kid. That's some other adult coming home giving you money is your fucking husband, you dumb broad. Do I got to fucking spell it out to you? So I just wrote her back. I just said I wasn't talking about single moms. I was talking about stay-at-home moms. You weren't listening. Let's, let's go here. Time travel. Um, time travel. Billy Thrills. Um, if you could travel to any time period, period prior to 1900, but you were forced to live out your life there, and you couldn't come back to the present, where would you choose to go? Keep in mind, anything before 1900 means everyone probably smells and dies at 40 years of age. That's not true. Not if you have money. You live long. Ben Franklin lived for a long time, and he was a fucking booze bag out there flying his kite in the rain. Yeah, did he live long? Yeah. Yeah, he lived to like be like 70. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he went out there with his kite in the rain, and he was fucking shit-faced. So he had his house keys tied to the thing. That's the real story of how he discovered electricity. He was fucking hammered. Are you serious? Yeah, he was out of his fucking mind. And if he was actually stone sober, he probably would have died because he would have tensed up yeah. when he got electrocuted. But because he was drunk, he was all relaxed. Like, hey, man. Yeah. And he just rolled down the hill, landed on his bald. That's actually how he went bald. He went down the hill like when the lightning struck. It hit the key and it blew the top of his head off. What? Yeah. New studies have shown all of this. No, oh, I thought it was just fucking male pattern baldness. No. That's he got electrocuted. No. Like 30% of people, this is the worst thing, they never talk about it. If you get struck by lightning, like, you immediately, it blows off that top part. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't come back either. Well, it wouldn't make a difference with me, but fuck it. That's why, like, Michael Bolton does that charity. He does that charity thing for, uh... Don't tell me he does a charity for people that get struck by, by lightning. By lightning, got their hair blown off. I can't believe you believe in this shit. I'm just making all of this up. No, the, yeah, the fucking top of the head, yeah. No, it doesn't. But does he have a charity? Michael Bolt? Yeah. Yeah. But not for that. No. Oh. Fucking you committed to that. I did. All right, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here like, this fucking... <laughs> Dude, that was getting so deep, I couldn't keep a straight face. I'm like, there's no way he's believing this one. All right, this one. Skidded down the hill. I said, that's how he went bald. And I go, no, no, wait. Here's a better lie. And you're still like, really? Is that what happened? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Paul. What's the world coming to? All right, Paul, if you could live any time period before 1900, anywhere, anytime. Oh, man. Where would you go? I don't know. I would go somewhere where there was a war. But wait, but in the question, can I take things from present? Oh, let's see, you time travel any period, 1900. Dude, what the fuck would you bring here? The second you pulled anything out, they no. think you were a witch and they'd no, kill you. what I'm saying is I would go to there with, like, shit that they don't have now. That's what I'm saying. And, like, like in a war, though, and I'd fucking just lace, like, if I took a side, you know, you go with a couple Uzis or a fucking machine gun, you just fucking lay, you win, you'd be a fucking god forever. You'd be a hero. You know, you'd be like, you'd be a god. So what are you going to do? You're just going to walk out in the field in your Nike fucking sweatshirt? <laughs> <laughs> your Jordans? Yeah, just walk out, dress like this, and they would be like, you know, when they were packing muskets and doing the whole thing. And I'd be like, no, 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 guys, I got this. So what year? What year? I'd so go, oh. I just fucking, and they would be like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'd just be the fucking man forever. I'd be the man forever. You imagine that? Yeah, I'm trying to wrap my head around where they're not completely freaked out by you. <laughs> you're going to go. So what, wait, first people. of all, First of all, first of all, what year are you going back to? Well, he said what? He said prior 1900? Yeah, so what year are you going back to? Uh, the pack and muskets. So what are we talking here? <laughs> uh, well, there was a couple of them, wasn't there? What is it, like 18, like 1870s? 1870s? Right. Well, by 1870s, they had like the Winchesters and those repeating rifles and that. 
They actually had their first like machine gun in the Civil War, I believe. Spanish American, anyways. Where you had the, the little crank, crank the you fucking mowed them down. So I go before that time then. So you're talking like I, I, if I was you, I would go early 1800s. Okay, so I'd go early 1800s. Yeah. And I would bring some sort of. Who are you gonna mow down? Um. What if you went in the French and Indian War, and you actually fought on the side of the Indians? What year was? <laughs> Just mowed down a well, bunch of well, French people. Well, either way, whichever side I decided to choose. Like when I got there and they saw that I showed up from a time machine. Right? One group's going to be nicer to me. Right? No, they're all going to be completely freaked out by you. Right, but one, there's going to be the View one. you as a threat, and you'll probably have to turn your Uzi on them. <laughs> then you'd have to steal their clothes and then try to fucking do an accent. I would choose the side of the people that were the nicest, warmest to me when I got there, and then I would fucking become their savior. Nobody's going to be nice to you, Paul. Do you understand that if I did that, they would rewrite the book on me? They would, re they would be a mythical... No, I would they would like kill their, you. No, I would they be would like kill you, Jesus. Paul. They would kill you. They would tell stories. What happened to Jesus? No, they would tell... What happened to Jesus? They he got went, crucified. Yeah, well, he didn't have an Uzi. Okay? So... Yeah, but you're going to run out of bullets, though. No, but I'm, in the question, it doesn't specify, like, what I'm coming with. I'm going to go prepared. How big is this fucking time machine? No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'm going to go with, like, a bunch of clips and a couple of Uzis, okay? And they're going to write fucking stories about me. They're yeah, like, mass guy, murdering psycho no. from the fucking future. They're gonna go some mythical some wearing guy. lazy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> some Italian lazy dude clothes from New York. That's... Some Italian dude from New York. They don't even know what New York is. Oh, actually, maybe yeah, they they want New York. Yeah, dude, you, you're not listen. You, 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 Paul, this is dude, this is the, the key. They wouldn't all kill me. But Paul, I would the, say I'm here to help listen. you. Listen, I got I came to this. I can't listen to what I would tell them. Okay, and then you tell them what you'd say. I say, look, I came from the future to help you. This machine brought me here to help you. I'm gonna solve your problems. And then I would fucking pull out the Okay. Gun, now let me ask you this, Paul. Let's, yeah. let's do this. Let's say okay. fucking after this tour, you right. can't sleep one night, and you look out your backyard, and you see this fucking thing appear out of nowhere. Right. And this guy gets out and starts walking towards your fucking house from a time machine. <laughs> and let's just say you have a shotgun. And this guy walks up, and he goes, no, no, hey, listen, listen, Paul, Paul. And he's wearing these weird workout clothes from 300 years in the future. Listen, I'm here to help you. I'm here to do things that you're going to like. You're going to fucking trust this guy? No, 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 because I was sleeping in my bed, and, and I'm not... I'm talking about I want to show up into a conflict. I want to show up to the moment of a conflict and fucking take a side and win it. I want to win the game for the team, is what I'm saying. It's a very and, narcissistic behavior here, Paul. You know? You think you're just going to show up on a battlefield? They're going to be like, our brothers, our brothers. Show up, and you fucking walk out of this thing with yeah, a hoodie sweatshirt and a fucking Uzi. Yeah, and, and, and the no, the, and, the Union Army and the rebels are not going to, like, one yeah, of them is going to embrace one of them is going to embrace you. Yeah, one of those groups are losing fathers and sons, and I go, I got this. Fuck the musket. And I just fucking, thrrr, I just fucking lace out an army. They're going to look at me like, dude, this guy, what are they going to do? They're going to go, we've been saved. This, he was saved. They would, once they realize you were mortal, <laughs> they would fucking probably, they would, they would take your weapons is what they would do. How they get the Uzi from me if they're fucking packing a musket and they have knives? Because, what are you talking about? Because you're going to have your fucking back to them. You're just shooting at the other guy. Paul, you know what they're going to do? They're going to probably act nice to you. This would be hilarious. And then, and, and then, and then what they're going to do <laughs> is they're going to try to figure out where the fuck you came from. They're going to immediately confiscate Look, your fucking time machine. Okay. And they're going to try to see if they can duplicate they it so, wait, so they, they can me? run the fucking world. Okay, how are they going to confiscate the time machine from me? When I'm the one with the ammo, I'm the one with the semi-automatic weapons. I'm the one who's just saying, what are they going to do? Here, what are they going to do, Paul? Is they're going to fucking put an all-points bulletin out on every fucking goddamn tree out there. Wanted. Sweatpant guy from the future. <laughs> this man alone. <laughs> has been in this time zone, <laughs> this era, for fucking 20 minutes well, listen, and has already killed <laughs> 600 people. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. The question was, where would you go and if you couldn't come back? If I survived this, well, I'm did a you, legend. Did you, did you a see? Did, did, forget about, I know you didn't read anything in history. <laughs> yeah, let's just Let's just talk movies. History. Okay. Yeah, World War II. Like what, that there's muskets in 1870? No, no, no. We're fucking did they World pack of the guns, shit? I mean, in 1870? I just laugh so hard at seeing dots. No, um, World War II I read about. I read about shit. You literally sound like you're sitting on a stoop right now. I know stuff. <laughs> Go ahead. What was the question? What were you Paul, saying? I, I was going to ask, I was going to talk about people in history. But how about, like, just, we'll go with movies. All right? All right. You saw There Will Be Blood? Yes. Okay, that's based off, like, the robber barons. Uh, of, of the fucking, you know, 17, 1800s, the, uh, the people who got involved in the oil, oil rig, yeah, the, yeah. the railroad guys, the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, the fucking people who, like... Who fucking started it all, yeah. Yeah, they came over here, right? 
They fucking got it. You know, they just, it was wide open. You could do whatever the fuck you want, and they, they did it. All right. All right? It's funny. I've made fun of you for being stupid. I can't even explain this. These guys, <laughs> the J.P. Morgans and all these types of fucking guys, when you show up with this machine where they can fucking change the past, they can change the fucking future, these sociopath psychos are not going to let you, Paul Verzi, once they fucking sit down and they talk to you, Paul, oh, okay, and yeah. they, they, they see where the fuck you're at, they, they will pretend to be friends with you, and when the second you set down your, your Uzi to have a little bit of mutton with them at the, in their all, villa, they all, would too, cut you ear no, to ear. No, no, no. First of all, I'm too fucking street smart to ever put my Uzi down and let them f and start fucking drinking tea and eating crumpets with these fucking I don't like how you think you're street smart in every fucking era, like you know what the signs are in 1812. You think I'm gonna leave my fucking Uzi down when nobody's got one? That's gold to those people. That's 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 ends that's ends problems. I would never do that. So you're gonna become friends with these people, always having a gun trained on them. So, so how that's about what this? you're telling me? No, no, so how about this? This is what I could also do. I could get there in my time machine and I could befriend one person. And I could let them know that I'm here to help them if they need and tell them what I could do. And then maybe they can say, Hey, listen, when we get into you know, when the rebels come, I got a guy. You know what? I wasn't even listening. I was thinking about what I was going to do. <laughs> All right. Well, what would you do? I, I would go back to, what's it, 1900? I would go back. Any, keep in mind, anything before eight, prior to 1900, I would go back to 1899. Okay? It's because I want the most up-to-date medical fucking shit available for when I come down with, you know, polio or whatever bullshit that's going to hit me. Um, I, what I would do is I would try out and make a Major League Baseball team, and I would fucking destroy them. With my, uh, with my knowledge of nutrition, my 100 year, 120 years in the future, my knowledge of nutrition. You know what I would do? I would take some PEDs back with me before they even know how to test for it. And I would fucking roid up. Fucking just give fucking and like I, Babe Ruth. And I would try out for the Boston Red Sox, and we would win it for every fucking year right through the 20s. That's a great idea. That's what I would do. But you'd have to go back with steroids. Yeah, you'd have to go back. You'd have to convince these people that you're going to inject I them. still don't think I could hit a curveball, though. Huh? I still don't think I could hit a fucking curveball. But I just figured if I went back to the fucking... Look, I couldn't, make a, I couldn't make a Major League Baseball team in the 1900s. But I think I could make one in the 1890s. So just I, have me go back. When did it start? 1880? Join the fucking Phillies? I wouldn't want them to win a championship. Well, well, I, I, what, 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 whenever the, when did the fucking Red Sox come around? They were the, first, the Red Sox came around in what? The Early 1900s? I'd like to play whenever they, they built Fenway in 1912. I would just like to come up to bat. God damn it, I couldn't do it. So I'd have to go back. But at my age now, I'd be too fucking old by then. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, but you'd still kill it, though. You'd All right, this is what I would do. I'd become totally fluent in Latin. And uh, I would fucking go back and I'd, I'd watch a game at the Roman Coliseum. <laughs> That's fu I, I'm telling you. It's all you, sports related. I would just take my chances with. I would just go with all the heavy artillery. I would be. I would be a defense. I would be. You know, I'm going the Ronald Reagan route. Just spend all of the, all the money on defense. I would hope that they would utilize me that way, as an asset, military wise. You know. Dude, you're out of your mind, dude. Why? Like, just me going back thinking that I could fucking make a team. Because I looked them back in those 1890s, like they were like softball teams. They just had ringers there. Those, you know, those guys didn't stretch. Dude, but you're not they understanding just went something. You're... Back in the Wild West days, they fucking went outside and they went back to back and then ten paces. I fucking get rid of that, man. I'm talking about. I have everything. I'm an asset. You don't have anything, Paul. What you have is a gun and bullets. You have the best gun right. with the best bullets. But you're ignoring the fact that an entire army is going to go after you. <laughs> That they're not going to allow. I'm up the hill they, and they, they, pants. They're not going to allow you. They wouldn't allow you to take power. But the way, Paul, the way that you seize power is you assimilate and you work your way up through the ranks, and then you have a you and then you strike when the uh, time is right. Yo, That's how you do it. If you, if, if you try and start your own, sh you come in there all rogue. No, dude, like, listen, I have better shit than you guys could ever dream of having, but don't worry, I'm your friend. <laughs> these fucking paranoid assholes, these control freaks, this, they wouldn't, they, you could not live. They oh. would be smearing you in, in the, the, the paper this, every fucking day, this talking about this reminds me of that, that you were a bigger threat than the savages that need to be clear. They, 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 would, they would put you above getting rid of Native Americans at that point. You, you would have to be eliminated, but not before they found out how, how took apart the gun to figure out how it worked, tortured you for all the fucking um, 
knowledge that you had and, and grilled you about that time machine to right, figure so out if, if you built it or you just fucking used it. So what if I lied to him and I said I could get more of this? I got a time machine. Nobody knows where it is, but I could go back and get more of this. Like, so if I, they knew that I could, I could, you know what I mean? If I lied to him that way. That's the best, that's the best move you've said out of all of this scenario where maybe, you know, you, you could do a play on their greed and, and their desire to have more. That's actually a smart fucking move. But if you just think that you're just going to show up with your fucking cigar and your Uzi and come walking out on a battlefield. Dude, this sketch. I almost just, want to do this. And just change the course of history depending on who was nicer to you. What if the Germans were nicer to you in World War II? I mean, you know, they had nice uniforms, Paul. You're going to sign with them? Dude, how funny would it be just watching me go in there with Air Maxes on? Nike Air Maxes on a cigar and a sweatshirt. I'm like, listen, sit down. I got a gun that could solve it, and I just show the guy. I would love to. I would fucking love to see the looks on their faces. And then all of a sudden they rebel against me. Just <laughs> I think if, if I think if you actually if, if you actually went out there and you mowed down the whole other side with what you had. Yeah. That was my original. That's that my. Thought. I I would think that if I was on the on my luckily side. on your side. Yeah. I would slowly be backing away as you were doing it, and then I would slip into the woods and fucking run away. Is what I would do. I would get the fuck away from you because I don't. Paul, you understand what the fuck I'm seeing. <laughs> Okay, you're going to show up in your space clothes with your fucking ray gun. I mean, it's just like, I'm out of there. I'm fucking out of there. I'm, I'm going to leave, and if you come towards me, I, I'm going to shoot. I mean, if a fucking alien landed and I had a gun, fuck his Dude, ray gun, would... fuck all that bullshit. I, if it starts coming towards me, i got to shoot at it. If that happened, I'd be living in the biggest house in the 18th. So I'd have all the women. Would be I would be the fucking Jesus there. They would fucking draw pictures Dude, of me. Dude, you know what it is, Paul? This is your own little narcissistic head trip. And that's the exact thing that would bring you down. You know something? I think that this is a great answer to your listener's question. First of all, you're acting. You know what I love about all of this, Paul? What? You're acting like you know how to make a fucking Uzi. No, I'm saying I would time bring machine. one. You're going to bring one. So yeah. all you did was bring it. And they're going to figure it out because the scientists back then were just as brilliant as the scientists now. They just don't have the information that the ones do today. So they would immediately break down your fucking what you are. That they you're would a, have to that, take my gun. That, that you're a stand-up comedian. <laughs> that's what they would do. Well, what are you going to do, Paul? What are you going to do for food? You're going to oozy a deer, okay, and then you know how to start a fire without some wood? Yeah. Rubbing it together. You know how to do that? Yeah. How do you do it? You know how to start a fire without matches? Yeah. You, well, I mean, I've seen it done. I watched it on the TV. I've seen it on the fucking, I've seen it on YouTube. I did. I fucking seen it on YouTube when we ran out of matches at the house one time. I swear to God, I was watching a clip. Yeah, I've watched it too. Yeah, the guy takes it. Have you done fucking, it? He gets the, the driest, whatever they call it, the grass or the dry fucking... Well, I'm going to tell you this right now. And they fucking... If you can make... If you can start a fire... They twist the thing. They, they, right. If you can yeah. start a fire tonight... All right. We'll go to the Toronto Central Park. If you can start a fight... A fight... A fire... I'll give you all the money I'm going to make on this tour. <laughs> With, don't watch the YouTube video again. I want to see you start this fucking fire. I okay? And if you wood, don't... I need some wood or If you a don't... Thing. If you don't... Then you have to walk into the fucking... Into Lake Ontario. With no, your Jordans on. Like and shit. Well, that's the point. I, yeah, want, no, you, I no. want you to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. You're like, yeah, you did see it. Wow. Sorry. All right, kegerator. First thing first. I'm over 21 years of age, so no worries about giving advice to, to a minor. Recently, my wife approached me and asked why we don't have a kegerator. Huh? He's got a good one here. Yeah. He goes, needless to say, within minutes of that statement, we now are the proud owners of a new kegerator. And seeing as how I've been married for eight years... And this is the first time she's ever given approval for a purchase prior to me buying it. I'm pretty excited about this. How do guys get themselves in that situation? Unless she's making all the money and you got to go to her for cash, right? Yeah, I mean, she seems cool unless she's got a drinking problem, but that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, I didn't even think of that. Anyways, however, I really need some advice as to what kind of beer I should keep it stocked with. Choosing the right beer is key to the process. I'm afraid if I buy something like Amstel Light, all my friends... We'll know my wife wears the pants in the family. That's hilarious because he gets a calorie, less calories here. Um, if I buy a, a stronger, thicker, more manly beer like Newcastle or Guinness, I might also have to buy a wheelbarrow to wheel my friends out of the basement on weekends, and I really don't need that level of responsibility. I can't do anything like Miller Lite or Coors, Coors Light because I might as well hook the tap up to the faucet. <laughs> that's true. That's very true. I said that a long time ago, that Coors Light, that's like vitamin water for alcoholics. <laughs> like all my friends, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, I'm on the wagon. I'm on the wagon. You're like, dude, you're fucking drinking. That's yeah, Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> um, I narrowed it down to Dos Equis or Labatt Blue. The only thing with Labatt Blue would be if any French Canadians find out I'm fucked because you know <laughs> those bastards would be knocking on my door seven days a week. Uh, what do you think, Paul? If you had to get a kegerator. If, if you had to get a kegerator. It sounds like this guy doesn't want to go domestic. 
uh, but he also doesn't want to go really fattening. Sam? Killian's? Sam Adams? Yeah. Uh, Sam, Sam Killian. Maybe a nice pale ale? I would go, uh, I would go, I would just go classic. It's a keg. It's a fucking keg. That's I would go a, Bud Riser. Isn't that such a weird thing for your wife to just purchase, like, to be like, yeah, you know what, I got that. Like, that's that's pretty fucking cool. That's beyond cool. That's weird, almost. Like, yeah. if Stacy came home, I would just be, yeah, I got this big wine rack. I'd be like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> she starts doing, like, little kegerator <laughs> headstands. You know, like, you know, like, you know, like, they have girl push-ups. She yeah. does, like, the girl version of what a beer, fucking keg stand. What beer would you put in there? I get, a, I get Budweiser, because that's, like, a classic, like, Budweiser like, who, who's going to come home? Dude, what are you going to come home like Norm on Cheers and you're just going to start pouring yourself a big mug of beer? You're going to be a tub of shit. So <laughs> I figure the only time you're really going to be pouring like that is if you have guys over for the game. Budweiser is a nice middle of the road that everybody's going to like. You drink Bud at the game. Yeah. It's not, it's not one of the but light beers. I feel like shit now. Like now that I'm like, you know, 33 years old and stuff, so my metabolism is obviously slowing down. But I got to be honest with you, man. When I drink three beers... I feel like a fucking fat bloated. I could yeah. feel my tits getting bigger. Yeah. I could feel You're about ready to enter enter your whiskey and scotch years. Yeah, I think That's so. What you do. You I get, think so because beer just gives me that blood and then you get tired. Whiskey? If I drink a whiskey on yeah. the rocks now, which is kind of dangerous. Uh, uh, wi whiskey, good. yeah, yeah, scotch, that's like a uh, a vaporizer for alcoholics. Like, you know, vaporizer, you have like vaporizer if you're going to smoke weed is is the way to do it, I would think cuz it, it filters out everything except the shit that gets you high. You take a hit off it. It, 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 it there's no burning sensation. It, it, it's it's like a mist. And I swear right. to God, if you get high with, with a vaporizer versus drinking three or four beers, like just the fatty tissue you're gonna build on your liver, like I would think that a vaporizer is. I mean, obviously, no research here because I'm an idiot. But I, I just by looking at it, that's arguably the healthiest way to get fucked up. You know what I mean? What's the most healthy to drink? What's more healthy? I have no idea. For fat. Well, I would say for, for not being fat, look, if you if you get like a, uh, you just drink hard stuff and you drink it on the rocks or you just drink it neat. And uh, what people get fucked up is, is you know, they, they drink like Jack and Cokes. You're drinking sodas all night. Um, See, I don't know all those fucking like alcoholic words like neat. I would just be okay, like, give neat. it to me regular. Yeah, neat is uh, no no ice. That's just straight. Okay. And then rocks is obviously with some ice. But you don't want to mix it with anything like you know, I guess you know, twist the lime. The older you get, you just you just want to go right to the fucking. You get right to the, the point. Older you get, it's like how old old people fight. If they're gonna fight, they're not gonna sit there and try. You know, who used to do that bit? Like Richard Pryor or somebody. They're not gonna look cool. They're gonna just immediately try to blow out your knee and just end the shit. They'll kick you in the balls. They don't give a fuck. That's the way old people drink. Like I've heard somebody tell was a bartender said when somebody comes in, if they order a beer, I think okay, this guy could be a problem. But if somebody just comes in and they order like a whiskey or whatever, and and then just sitting there, you know. And they know how they want to drink. All right, this guy's a pro. He can handle right. himself. This guy's a rookie. Yeah, he's yeah. Get ugly. Oh yeah, he's coming in. Let me get uh, you know, give me get a shot of Zambuca. A couple. Yeah, you guys want to do shots? You want to round up the uh, shots? Uh, no, those guys. Yeah, that's gonna be. It's like, like a, a car bomb. As soon yeah. as you start. <laughs> Dude, is a car bomb the dumbest thing? The I, Irish car bomb. It's cool because what it is makes it? you drop amaretto into a beer. Is that what uh, it is? what is a sh it's it's a isn't it? It's a Guinness and a, and it's a shot of no, not a Guinness. It's a maybe a, there's a bunch oh, of alcohol. No, I'm right not now. gonna lie. To the end of this podcast got me thirsty. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I'm ready to drink. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, we're, we're boozing after this. Um, yeah, so sir, I would go with but okay. So he says Dos Equis or Labatt Blue. You know what I would do? I wouldn't do Dos Equis just because the most interesting man in the world is a little overhyped. I go Labatt Blue. I think that's cool. I have I can't remember what Labatt Blue tastes like. It's Canadian, right? Yeah, but does it have the extra alcohol? No, when it, once it comes oh. in, once it comes into it's this like country, the country, triple X has the extra alcohol. Is Dos Equis good? I heard Dos Equis no, is wait, good, wait, Dude, that's another reason to fucking get into hockey. When you go up to Canada, when you drink their beer, it's, it has twice the alcohol content. You know what the funny thing about tremendous. Canadians are? Other than they're the fact they say, and neutral. Hey. They're peaceful and neutral with everything, but their sport is fucking barbaric, and they drink like fucking maniacs. They do, and they're not peaceful either. They're not. That's just Michael Moore's version of what they are because it worked for his documentary dude they lost a hockey game and they burned down their city talk about an unacceptable okay? face exactly michael moore's on the head of that i got family. i got i got fucking two words for canada grow up all right here's another two act your fucking age <laughs> i'll be in edmonton at the uh no i'm kidding versi's got me addicted to florentine's podcast and now versi does like he does a pretty good florentine <laughs> the florentine is the funniest motherfucker ever listen to, to just florentine complain about, about anything Oh my God! That yeah, robot! That about, robot! Right? You're fucking kidding me! Fucking it's garbage. garbage! Fucking joke! <laughs> <laughs> fucking Fox News robot! Fucking dude, you got that like, robot? The way he goes like up, <laughs> or he like drags the word out? It's fucking, fucking halftime! Fucking that's really good, man. <laughs>
Uh, dude, um, he's fucking funny, man. Listen to that guy complain. Really, really? Like we've never seen a beautiful woman before? Yeah, Bud Light commercial. It's fucking ridiculous. Um, all right. Uh, what do we got here? This is, uh, okay, sunglasses. There's some really uh, some weird ones this week. People like, this guy says, uh, hey, Bill, I need, I need to, uh, my, my listeners send in like questions and shit, and I read it just to let you know. Billiam, I need to ask you a very important question. My wife makes fun of my choice of sunglasses. She thinks they're not hip enough. Um, I told her I was wearing brown tinted sunburst aviators since college before the whole aviator hype. Is there aviator hype? <laughs> I don't even remember. Even Top Gun like, came like, out. Yeah, I was going to say, back then, those people who... <laughs> in 1980s. Yeah, who wanted to be like Tom Cruise. You know my neighbor when I was growing up? Any movie that Tom Cruise was in, he got into that, like whatever it was. Like uh, Top Gun, he joined like the fucking... Uh, <laughs> no. He, no, he joined like the, 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 the Air Force Reserves. No. The alligator armed it. He joined that... And then um, Days of Thunder, he started racing cars. No cocktail. He became like a bartender. His rich dad got him out of the fucking <laughs> the uh, fuck reserves. Are you serious? Yeah, he started getting into that. What else did he do? There was like three things. So it kind of became this running joke, like whatever fucking Tom Cruise movie was coming out. And then eventually he moved out to L.A. Finally, just, just well, why don't I just be a fucking actor? You know, so I don't have to actually <laughs> join the fucking Air Force. <laughs> That's uh, don't know what ever happened to him. So anyway, aviator glasses, which were yeah, the Tom Cruise fan slash date rapist. Remember that fucking kid I was talking about him? Do you remember that kid who he had the rough sex with the girl in, the, in Central Park and she died? No. You're too young for that. Yeah, this guy. What? He, yeah, this fucking psycho. No, he killed her. He tried to. He tried to. He tried to say that they that she wanted rough sex. It was consensual, and it, it, I don't know what it, it, it. He accidentally killed her or whatever. That puts I mean, a whole other meaning to the word killing it. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ, Paul. <laughs> How you Jesus. doing, with the ladies? Oh, uh, kill it. <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> fucking crushed it. Um. So. <laughs> Anyways, dude, that's fucking brutal. So anyway, but this guy, you know what? It actually made me mad when he got out of prison. Not only that, that, that he got out of, on two levels it made me mad. First of all, the guy got out of prison. But uh, the idiots on the news going off on the guy were saying, because when he got out, he wasn't on parole because he did all his time. Because he didn't get time off for good behavior. Because they were just like, you know, he had fights in prison. He was selling drugs and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, the, all, the, all that that says in there is he didn't get raped. He did what he had to do in there to survive. So on some level, yeah, you have to respect that because that's, that's the big fear as a guy. Wait, did he rape the girl or it was just rough sex? I don't know what he did. I don't know what that's happened. That's such a big difference, though. Well, I don't know if he went like Ron Artest, like it was going good and he was excited and then he fucking elbowed her. <laughs> Why are we joking about this? He just this? and then he fucking started <laughs> pounding his chest. Yeah, and then they didn't show the replay because it was a home game. Um... <laughs> No, he, he fucking, uh, so, I don't know. So how long did he do They let him out of jail. Yeah, he did like all 15 or 16 years because they couldn't get him on murder because he said it was like, I, I know, like on, on rape trials, like they, what they always do, like the, the hardest thing to get him on is when they say it was consensual. So then all DNA is out the fucking window. Then you have to like, it's, 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 it's the worst fucking thing. If, if somebody does that to a woman, they, they should be, honestly, they should, they should just, they should have like a flamethrower. And they should just have it pointed at the defendant. And Jerry, would you like to read the verdict? Just, <laughs> on the count of uh, rape, we find him guilty in the first degree. Just, whoo, just light him on fire right in front of the family. Yeah, yeah. Right in front of, right in front of the family. That, that's how I would run it. The same, same thing with uh, child molesters. Oh, that's the worst. Child molesters, that's it. Child molesters, I would actually have them get chased by rabid dogs first. And then, <laughs> dude, this Sandusky yeah. guy and, and, get fucking, this Sandusky guy should get fucking drawn and quartered in the courtroom. Oh, just yeah. put his fucking body parts in a bag. He should be it. underneath an oil tanker, and then they should drive it to fucking... Uh, is that how you do? you drive a, a boat, drive it to like fucking... Uh, man that's walking this earth. He's a that's what I would do with that guy. Dude. What I would do with that guy, well, I would go into shark-infested waters, and I would give him a bunch of paper cuts, and I'd tie him to the front of a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I never heard of like that. Well, that's, that's a good one, man. Well, just Paul, you got to understand, when, when you do something like that to somebody, you didn't just... You, you ended that kid's life... And then you affected generations of people because who they're going to marry, how they're going to treat the person they marry, how they're going to treat their kids, and then the, the treatment of the kids, how they're going to act in society, society it just it, it creates. It's like that, that little Confucius thing when you drop the pebble in the still pond and the ripples just go like that. So you got a little poetic on you. It's, it's like that. No, see, that's what I say. Tie to the front of a boat, paper cut, shark infested waters. And that's it. And you know what's awesome. funny? And this is the thing about it. That's funny. That'd be awesome. Um, and it, it still won't stop them. It's don't stop it from happening, but you should just you should start weeding them out. That's a sick, like that's a sickness, man. From young, it's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Like to, 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 that's just a, uh, and it ruins the lives of, of everybody. For, but but the kid forever.
Yeah, it's over. Why are you saying what I just said, Paul? Oh, did you say it? I'm sorry. Yeah, you won't even listen. A typical no, comedian. Thinking, no, you were no, thinking no. about what you were no, going to say. That's literally about, exactly no. what I just said. No, I was thinking about the. Um, you saying what? I was thinking about him actually like hitting the thing like a buoy. Oh, that's right. You, you got you got that you got that weird fucking shit where you you every once in a while you you think about doing crazy Horrible stuff, right? Sometimes, yeah. I was getting nervous about admitting this type of stuff. Like someday, if you're like on trial, like you know, I'm going to get put in contempt of court because I'd still never rat you out. But it'd be like, what are you talking about? You guys talked about this on the podcast. Are you kidding me? It was a joke. <laughs> like a garbage. <laughs> oh, we didn't ask the fucking guy's question here. We were talking about aviators. He said, what's the breakdown of douchey sunglasses versus acceptable, versus acceptable ones? What kind of sunglasses do you wear, and does Nia have any say in the matter? I imagine you wear very non-threatening, low-profile shades. I can't tell if that's an insult or if he's calm. Sounds like an insult, right? Um, no, I don't think it's an insult. I think this guy genuinely wants to know. Uh, what he could wear to make his girl stop trashing him. Well, this is what you have to do. First of all, depending on where you are in your relationship, is, is if you feel secure in your relationship, maybe she's just doing you a solid and telling you that you look like a douche. But if she's always telling you everything, what to do, then you have to continue wearing those glasses, and you have to wear them over to her mother's house. Defiance. Yes, and, and wear them into the house, and don't take them off when her mom's talking to you. <laughs> That's like a buddy, a buddy of mine, right? Dude, women, though, women, just, I just want me to say something real quick. Oh, God, more women trashing? I was no, hoping no, you were going to no, be nice to like, them. It's just like, could you, like, a guy's really thinking about that. And this happens all the time. This guy's got a genuine concern here. But, like, for, like, I've heard of guys going, yeah, my girl just looked over at me and looked at that shirt and goes, ugh, it's such a turn off, take it off. And I want to be, it, it's in my mind, I'm just like, I want to be like, dude, shut the fuck, are you out of yeah, your mind? Yeah, but those guys, those guys deserve it. They fucking deserve it, Paul. If you if you let the woman in your life talk to you like that, well, they, they, they fucking deserve it. The same way a woman deserves no, it. If, if, if their guy is a fucking asshole, minus... Them beating the shit out of you, but I gotta, yeah, minus them beating the shit out of you. But like if, guy, if, if they beat you up, then that's just complete bullshit. No, of but if they're walking around being a fucking asshole, disrespecting you, that, that's on you. Okay, break to, up with them. But what if the guy says to her, "Shut, shut up," you know, I'm wearing the shirt. Shut up. Yeah. Is he a dick? No. Right. But then it's like, oh my god, don't. That's talk a total to you. turn up to disgust. We take that up. Just flip it around. What if you ever said that to your girl? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's disgusting. It makes you look fat. Come on, you'd never do that. <laughs> no. Even if you said that disgust me, that would be it. Listen, here's my answer. They would to pout you. through the fucking dessert that night at the meal. Well, here's my answer to your to your uh, your listener's question here. If you like him, dude, and you look in the mirror and you go, you know something, I like the I like the glare, I like if it's orange tint or whatever, you like it, fucking wear it. Paul, you know something? That's why you and your wife are so comfortable to hang around. Because how many times you guys tell each other go fuck yourself? You say go fuck yourself, right? You do that, right? Like, no, we'll just be like, ah, oh, you know something, shut, like yeah, yeah like, shut not, up. Not in a but right in a loving way, like a. Yeah, but you have to you have to keep you got to keep them off you. The same way she has to keep you off her, you know, if she didn't keep you in check, you'd golf fucking t <laughs> nine times a week. Right, right. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. There's a fine line in what's like, you know, yes, exactly. Dude, I had a buddy of mine, right? He fucking, we went fishing, right? We were done fishing. Uh, you know, we drank a bunch of booze or whatever. We were smoking cigars, and his wife pulls up, and, you know, they told their kid about the dangers of smoking, right? So the kid starts fucking crying, and blah, and there's all this big fucking thing. And the kid, the guy was literally in the doghouse. And I guess maybe because the kid was crying, I kind of saw her point. But he's one of those fucking guys. I, I, I wanted to say to him, like, dude, you know what really help your relationship? Next time you drop your kid off in the car, take out a big fat fucking Cuban and just light it up. Yeah. And I got, what are you doing? I'm smoking a cigar because I enjoy it. When I come home, I'm going to watch a game. And I'm smoking this fucking cigar. And when she says why, you say because you can go fuck yourself. And that, and I'm telling you, <laughs> it's a little blunt. You can, you can round off yeah, the you edges. Might not wanna, yeah, you yeah. might not want to say you could go fuck yourself. But I'm just but saying, saying that would help your relationship. Happy. It's like that movie. Remember the movie there with uh, Kevin Spacey when she comes home? What is that in the driveway? He's like, that is a 1969 Firebird. And he just, I went out and bought it because I wanted it. Go fuck yourself. And, like, and you saw the look on her face. There was a shift for the better in that relationship. But doesn't he die in the end? Doesn't he get killed? Oh, uh, I don't know. Was that was that? Uh... That was a weird one. He wanted to fuck that twelve-year-old. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Fuck that movie. Sitting there with rose petals falling all over him. Um, so we're saying, you know what? You wear the you wear the goddamn sunglasses you want to, sir. That's right. Anyways, I got them into the biggest, dumbest fucking fight last night with my girl. Right? We had this great day. You know, everything's going great. So I stay in. I take a night off from comedy. And I say, hey, why don't we watch? Why don't we watch a movie? You know what I mean? Cap off this wonderful fucking day. Everything's going great. What could go wrong? This is like the beginning of a horror movie where they just show like the perfect family and everything's great and people are wearing like white linen, you know? And then all of a sudden they just start showing the camera in the bushes like a POV of like Mike Myers. This is basically what happened. So 60 Minutes comes on, right? Who doesn't want to watch that show and pretend they're smart, you know? 
I like it. So Mor- Morley Safer comes on. And you know he smells like an old person. Some old people don't smell like old people, but he looks like he smells like an old person. You know? Smells of cigars, ashtrays, you know? A couple of wars, maybe a date rape. Um, <laughs> so he's interviewing Meryl Streep. All right? The great Meryl Streep. And they're going through all her old, her old friggin' life and all the movies and all the different characters that she's played. Oh, first of all, they start, they start the report off with Morley Safer just sitting there, right, smelling of fucking Ben Gay and whiskey, right? And uh, he says how, you know, how over in England, you know, they, you know, I don't know, they make their, their actors, they, they award them by calling them lords and they knight them. But over here in America, all we do is just give them this shiny statue, and it's just like, he starts off right off the bat for some reason just shitting on America. I don't know why. Like an Oscar is somehow beneath Sir uh, Anthony Michael Hall. I mean, or, or Lord what? Lord of what? Lord of what? At least you can fucking hold our statue. You're Lord of what kingdom? That phony horseshit that you have with Prince Charles and the popper or whatever the fuck is going on over there? You know? Look, if the Rothschilds knight you over there, then that fucking means something. Then you can come become part of their yacht convoy as they go around the world, figuring out how to take over another currency, right? Then you're in with them, okay? But if you're, if you're fucking, you know, lord of this and your, your wingman is the Duke of Elton John, I mean, it's, the whole thing is fucking stupid, right? So right off the bat, it's already bugging me. But I know Nia hates when I talk to the TV, right? So, I, you know, I keep my, my big fucking yap shut. And they start talking about Meryl Streep, ba, 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 going through the whole thing. And then um, the old guy there, smelling of, uh, you know, prescription meds, goes, uh, you know, whenever they talk about the roles you play, they always say, you know, you play independent-minded women, very strong women. And Meryl goes, I know, that's, yeah, that's what they say. You know, when a guy, they never say to a guy, oh, you're playing a strong-willed character, yada, yada, yada. I let that go, whatever, no biggie, I'll take that. It's probably true. What the fuck do I know? I'm not a woman, right? But then they show her after she played Margaret Thatcher, and she's given a speech to a bunch of women's young girls, and she's trying to inspire them. And she, she takes a quote from Margaret Thatcher, and it was something along the lines of, if you want a bunch of people to talk around, talk, stand around talking about doing something, you know, something, uh, go, you, you got to talk to men. But if you want it to actually get done, you got to get a woman. And then all the chicks go, woo! like flipping out right so i laugh and i'm like yay reverse sexism right just seeing you know my my whole fucking theory how everybody is just a piece of shit you just don't have the power to act out what the fuck you want to do because that that right there if you flip that around as a guy if you're running for president it's fucking over you can't be like let me tell you and i'll tell you what after i get your jobs and after i fix this economy okay and i'm the man to do it because i'll tell you right now if you're looking for someone to stand around and talk about doing something, you get a woman. You want to get it done, you got to get a man. Here are my nuts, right here on the podium. Vote for me November 4th. Go fuck yourself, right? You did that, your presidential campaign's over. She does it. It's fucking adorable. And it's just as fucking ignorant. You know what I mean? What the fuck do you get off saying that we stand around and do nothing, Meryl Streep? Huh? Or quoting Margaret, and you too, Margaret Thatcher. Let me tell you, you bitches, something, all right? We faked a fucking lunar landing. Okay, you think that's just talking? Anybody can land on the fucking moon. That's easy. But to pretend you did it, all right, and get everybody to shut the fuck up about it, that that that, that right there, that takes skill. So whatever. So I make that little comment. And uh, did I just go, that, 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 that? I sound like fucking porky pig. So, so I make that comment. And, like, you know, I've been with Nia long enough that I can tell by the side of her face when she's just thinking about, like, what if I just grabbed everything I really cared about and walked out of this house right now? <laughs> She got like that fucking mad at me, you know? And I'm like, she's just like, right after the story was over, she just shut the fucking thing off. And uh, I don't know what happened. Next thing you know, I'm walking to 7-Eleven to get some ice cream. I, I don't even know what happened. It was all going great. You know, am I the asshole there? What, what am I, am I supposed to just fucking sit there with my mouth hanging open with drool coming out when I watch TV? If somebody says something douchey, I, I'm not supposed to say it. Ah, whatever. Whatever. So I just finally just said, you know what? Fuck this. I take the dog out. I go around the block. 
What do I do? I'm calling my guy friends, right? They're all backing me up. I'm not saying who I called. I don't name names, right? And they're all laughing their ass off, and they 100% agree with me, which is all I'm looking for at this point. I just want people to say that I'm right. I don't want to learn anything from this experience. Just tell me I was right so I can be an ignorant ass again. I don't know. Why don't you guys weigh in on that? Am I a dick for saying that? Should I just let that one go? You know? Oh, you know what she said that fucking drove me up the wall? She goes, why are you... She didn't say intimidated. She used one of those words. Why are you threatened by what she said? It's like, I'm not th threatened. Ugh. I, you know, Jesus Christ. Then I take the bait. You know, it just sends me right over there. Like, threatened about what? Oh, my God, this person that I don't know who has never called me nor will ever call me who has no effect on my life. How do you get threatened by that? I'm just calling it for the bullshit that it is. Because you know what? This is what fucking drives me nuts. I can't stand when somebody tells me that their shit sandwich tastes worse than my shit sandwich. Okay? Go fuck yourself. At what point am I supposed to have empathy as I'm sitting here eating a shit sandwich and you're telling me how much worse yours is? Yours is. You know, at the end of the fucking day. You know what I mean? Sure, mine might be on, you know, a better slice of bread, which I guess would make it taste a little bit better, but at the end of the fucking day, right? At the end of the fucking day. All right, I'm going to end up in a FEMA camp with you. Okay, you think when the next fucking uh, psycho comes along, I'm going to make the cut? What the fuck do I, what, what do I bring to the world? Huh? Exactly. I'm going to be standing right next to you. So go fuck yourself. And you're just fucking woman, every time she sneezes, they give her another goddamn award. She's still bitching. Still fucking bitching. You know, it's ridiculous. I remember when I did this Oscar-nominated part. Oh, go fuck yourself with your wigs. The whole thing just, you know, that's what fucking pisses me off when I watch this shit. If you really want to know my perspective is from where I come from, I can't bitch about shit because everybody's like, oh, go fuck yourself. You hit the lottery, right? But I got to sit here and listen to you, bitch, even if you're fucking killing it. Even if you're killing it. You know? Yale school of drama. And he stepped on the bull. Go fuck yourself with your goddamn yachts. All right. There you go. That, that felt good. It's probably ignorant. But whatever. Moving on. What the hell am I going to talk about? Oh, you know, I went, I went into a bar last night. Oh, yesterday afternoon because the games come on early. So I'm sitting there, right? I'm with a buddy of mine, right? Watching the game. We're having a great time. Right in like the fourth quarter. Uh, these four girls, four or five girls come in, and it's a dive bar, you know. I like the dive bars. You can get a place to sit, you know. It's just one of those deals. Somebody has one of those fucking, what's Nick Nolte's character in 48 hours? You know, there was, there's always one of those cars parked out front, some fucking piece of shit ragtop with some sad dog in, in the back seat, right? I like those bars, you know, the bar fly car, right? So I walk in there, we're watching the game, and like fucking with like, uh, I don't know, Five minutes to go in the game. So what's that, like two hours NBA time? These like five, six chicks come in, and they're just like, they're just train wrecks. All of them wearing pants where you can just see their clams. You know, ridiculously tight pants. Another girl's got these cutoffs with this, her hat turned sideways, looking like she's in some fucking Fresh Prince video in the late 80s. It's just, they were just absolute messes. And they start putting money into the jukebox, and they just start singing along. They start to sing along to uh, Video Killed the Radio Star, right? And then they just start, you know, and then there's all these fucking old guys, barfly fucking jack-offs like my age and a little bit older, like way too fucking old for these chicks, right? And these girls are being like really fucking loud, and they're fucking dancing with each other, and they're grabbing each other's asses, doing all this shit. And you see these guys up at the bar, they're like, Oh, oh, they start like reacting to this sex fucking energy that they're putting out there. So two of the girls stand up. They start. That's what it got, dude. It was like the fucking accused, like times five was going down. The whole vibe it was fucking ridiculous. So the two girls stand up. They start like dancing, grinding up against each other. And then one of the guys eventually, like some big fucking sex star bear, starts walking over and starts pawing at the girl. And then the girl's like, "Hey, knock it off! Get the fuck out of here!" Right? And my buddy, classic, looks at me and goes, she facilitated that entire fucking thing. And it's like, exactly. Fuck, it, it was, uh, I don't know if they were strippers. I don't know what their fucking deal was. But um, it was just one that thing that I've always said, where you, you got to have responsibility for your own fucking safety. Obviously, that guy shouldn't just feel that he should be able to walk over and start pawing at some girl. But, you know, when you're sitting there with your clam fucking outlined on the front of your fucking jeans... 
and you're grinding up against her, your friend and you're pulling her jacket off and she's going, stop it, stop it. And you keep pulling it off. I mean, what the fuck do you think's going to happen? You know, I fuck, you know, there's nothing worse than when people act like the world is a perfect place and then they act shocked when something bad happens. It isn't, okay? There's the way you wish the world was and the way it is, so fucking act accordingly. You don't go in there with your fucking hoo-ha hanging out and start grinding up on your friend in front of fucking five drunk guys who women haven't done a double take at since the fucking, I don't know, Fernando Valenzuela struck out the side, okay? I'm saying they're wrong, people. It was just, it was a really fucking uncomfortable vibe. And I literally looked at my friend, I go, look, we don't get out of here in three minutes. We're going to be testifying in about fucking six weeks for whatever bullshit's about ready to go down. And you know what kills me is no one at the bar stopped them from doing what they were doing. You know, I was trying to think what the fucking male version of what they were doing would be. I guess it would be like acting aggressive and almost causing like a fight vibe. All right. But, you know, then you get tossed out. But women could can create the accused vibe. And uh, I don't know, I'm probably going to get shit for this. But, like, you know, I'm not advocating what that guy did. That, what that guy did was fucking wrong. But Jesus fucking Christ. What did your dad do? Did he buy, like, Fisher Price, How to Be a Whore? Did they make, like, a, remember those little fucking stereos they made? Did they make, like, a fucking, the whore version of that? I don't know. I'm at that age, people. I'm at that age where I look at women like that and I don't go, like, well, there's an easy mark. I now look at them going, like, ah, Jesus Christ. Where the fuck was your dad? What didn't he do? Um, but anyways, but what was actually funny was for some, this is how drunk they were. As they were grinding on each other and fucking pulling up each other's dresses and doing all this shit to fucking, for whatever reason. Uh, out of nowhere, they just started singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> and then the guys at the bar joined in. And I have video of it. I'm going to send it to my guy, and hopefully we'll get it up on the site. I got it, like, halfway through. They sang the whole fucking song. And what was funny was that whole fucking is somebody going to get rape vibe went out the window. Both sides for, like, a good three minutes were in, in harmony uh, with some sort of support the troops vibe just out of fucking nowhere. And I, this is the funniest thing about it. This was probably, like, seven in the evening. This is how fucking wasted everybody was. Um, all right. Plowing ahead here. Um, oh, whatever. Women, what do you think about that? Am I being the fucking caveman there? I'm not advocating that, that, that I'm saying that those guys, what they did was right, but like, you can't, I, that's like, it's like me, like I've always said this, that's like me walking through Central Park at like three in the morning, dressed like Liberace singing, I'm in the money. I'm in the money, yep, I got a photo, I got a lot of fucking cash in my back pocket, right? And then someone comes up, smashes me over the head, I get a concussion, I got a fucking, my cheekbones fucked up. You know, they take my wallet, you know, and all that shit. Is it wrong? Yes. Do you feel bad for me? Yes. But what the fuck was I thinking? You know, why don't you just fucking uh, give yourself a bunch of paper cuts and jump, jump in shark-infested water and then fucking go, and then it bit my leg off. You're an asshole. That's, uh, that's, that's my side of it. All right, OG. What's up, Cleo? How you doing? You know psyched I was to see you? You know I was psyched to see you? Because you were psyched to see me. You're always psyched to see me, aren't you? You know my dog actually misses me? Comes into the bedroom at night and it fucking looks around for me. Then it runs into my little office area looking for me. Right? If I'm not around, who are you going to wrestle with? Let me see if I can get you to moan. Hey, Cleo, let me see if I can get you to howl. You want to go outside? Cleo, this is going to be worth it, people. Just listen. You want to go outside? Cleo. Hey, she's getting psyched. Cleo, you want to go outside? Cleo, I want her to howl. Come on, Cleo. You want to go outside? Cleo, would you fucking do it, please? Cleo, oh, you're fucking burning me right now. Cleo, hey, fuckhead. Cleo, why won't you howl for these people? You want some food? You want to go outside? <laughs> Cleo, only well, one more temp. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. You know what this is like? The hot chick that'll never fuck you, and she just keeps giving you a glimmer of hope, and you keep coming back. You keep coming back. Whatever. I still love you, Cleo. You know, even though you just made me look like a fucking asshole. You really did. It was literally the Bueller. Anybody? Anybody? Cleo. I think my dog is sleeping with its eyes open. Oh, no, she just moved her eyebrows. You know what's weird? When my dog sees a squirrel through a window, it, it cries <laughs> like it's a long-lost buddy. But if my dog is outside, it will try and rip its fucking head off. So I don't... Does anybody know anything about dogs? What is it crying about? Is it crying like, oh, oh I want to rip its head off. I wish I could just end that thing's fucking life. Fucking dog.
We had company over yesterday. My girlfriend had a friend over, and they were baking a cake out in the kitchen where broads belong, right where they fucking belong. Yeah, so they're out there making a cake. And my dog, you know, has bonded with me and my girl, Pitbull, you know. So now whenever we have company, she lets out a little growl. Isn't that what you do, Cleo? She does a little bit of that. You know, we've been trying to get her acclimated. To, uh, I keep her on the fucking leash, okay? You understand that, Cleo? You're on the goddamn leash because I'm not fucking getting sued because you're a psycho. Yeah, you're a psycho. All right, all right, get off me. Um, hmm? Can't do that to a little dog, huh? You like that? You hear that sound? You like that? That makes a pit bull happy. Come on, slap me around. I like it, huh? Like Jake LaMotta? Like Jake fucking LaMotta? Only cuter? Hmm? Get off me. Stop trying to dominate me. I watch the dog whisper. I dominate you. I grab your fucking tail like that. You like that shit? Really? Does nothing for you? You can't hurt a pit bull. Fucking heads are made of titanium. So anyways, these two broads, they're out there in the kitchen, okay? And they're talking about nothing, as usual. Typical women, not a fucking thought in their goddamn heads. Just emptying the fucking shit in their head. Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up, right? So I bring the dog up, because I'm a man, you know? I'm wearing pajama bottoms, no... No shirt and some slippers. That's how I do it. It's my fucking house. It is. It's my apartment, and I rent it from another man like a bitch. But what, anyway, we'll talk about that later. So anyways, you know, so I bring the dog over. The dog sees the other broad out there. And I go, Cleo, no. And uh, she ends up fucking, uh, you know, put her down on the rug. You know, she lays down on the rug, and I got her on the leash, and everything's fine. So uh, then after a while, you know, it's just, it's comfortable. She's the, she's the girl's cool, and it's just chilling and everything, and all of a sudden, uh, I go, hey, come on in here, look at this YouTube video. And the dog had its ears back. I was looking to see if its ears came up, if it was, if it was fixating all that dog whisper shit, and it wasn't. It was just sitting there. Out of nowhere, just rawr, rawr, and fucking lunged at her. Really freaked me out. So my dog is on uh, probation right now. All right, questions. Hey, Bill, uh, would you rather have a dick where your nose is or a dick where it's supposed to be, but it talks? Oh, man, that's a great fucking question. Um... I, I would I would take I would have a dick where it's supposed to be, but it talks, and uh, I just put a sock on it. <laughs> what do you mean it talks? Does it you know Does it say shit independently of what I'm saying, or does it just say the same shit that I'm saying, like a backup singer? Because that that could be cool. If I had a little bit of a deeper voice, I could kind of get that echo thing going, like on those old Dean Martin records that they tape right down the street at Capitol Records. Um, well, I couldn't have a dick on my fucking nose where my nose is. I mean, it would just be horrific. Dude, your face is what you want to protect. Anything else, you, you know, the face comes first. You can't have a dick on your face. You just can't do it, you know. You couldn't even join the circus because it'd still be considered like, like, uh, um, not crude, uh, perverted. Kids couldn't see it. So what the fuck am I going to do with that? You, you know, you can't even go to Times Square because they closed up all those weird... Does Coney Island even exist? There's no way to go with that, Okay. But if you had a dick that talked, uh, yeah, I'd just put a piece of tape. I'd have to gag it every morning. Um, but you know what I like about that? I immediately assume that the dick would be trying to sabotage what I'm doing. I view everything as a heckler. Even my own cook. All right. Hey. Fucking great, Joe Rahmo. Yeah. Yeah. That was fucking funny. See, Norm could be followed in a roast. Greg Geraldo. <laughs> There's too much heat for Norm. Fucking Eddie Hiss in the room now. How you doing, man? Uh, Fucking Jack Ruby has a better television career than you. <laughs> the fucking horse's head in The Godfather 2 did better in the business. <laughs> Godfather 1, 2, shut the fuck up. One or two gives a fuck. They got the fucking joke, okay? <laughs> fucking Norton doesn't take shit from anybody unless it lands on his chest. <laughs> no one's calling you. <laughs> fucking Keith. What a fucking zero he is. More comics have passed Keith Robinson in this business than the last place runner in the New York Marathon. Okay. Why does everybody groan when you do a Keith Robinson joke? Like they like Keith? Oh, fuck him. Sell out. <laughs> Fuck Keith. They love him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our next act coming to the stage, I guess you would call him Kathy Griffin without tits. Billy Burr. All right, thank you. Keep it going for Rich Voss, everybody. Come on, everybody.
And for those of you who saw last comic standing, how about a round of applause for the official end of his fucking career? Come on, everybody. <laughs> Bitch, that was the, the worst fucking show I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe you said yes to that. Fucking Al LaBelle turned down that show. <laughs> Jesus, it's fucking unbelievable. He's been in this business 39 years. He's competing with open micers. You didn't even fucking stand out. You should have looked like Christ. You didn't look like Christ. You didn't even look like a comedian. You look like a fucking landscaper who's just trying the shit out on a whim. <laughs> but you're dumb. You deserve it. Look at Rich. Rich spent three grand on a watch and eight dollars on his teeth. <laughs> look at him. He looks like fucking John Elway. He's a football player from 20 years. These can't all be gems, people. There's a decent line, right? Maybe if you didn't spit on somebody every 20 seconds. You get a fucking deal, man. Look at that thing. That's not a bridge, it's a fucking dam. <laughs> Something. All right, let's move on, because that's dying. All right, Vanessa Hollings had us here, everybody. Uh, Vanessa, I've seen you for like the last seven years. I got one question asked about your act. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no one cares about your stupid characters. Just talk about your dick and get off the stage. <laughs> Too mean, it's a roast. Fuck all of you. It's all right, thank you. It's getting worse, people. I'm starting off with the cute ones. All right, I just got back from the Mike, uh, Mike Birbiglia's one-man show called An Evening with Todd Barry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Todd Barry, little advice. Maybe if you brought the energy up just a little bit, you could get a food spot at the cellar. <laughs> Oh, and speaking of the seller, Manny and SD just wrote a book called How Dare You Work Another Club. <laughs> Keith Robinson wrote the foreword. I'm going to read some of it. No, Massa, I won't be working no other club. <laughs> Bring it up, Modi, boss. Bring it up, Modi. <laughs> Coming up the stairs, boss. Coming up the stairs. <laughs> Unfucking believable. Keith Robinson sold his soul for free nachos and buffalo wings. <laughs> Just fucking around. I tease the comedy cellar. I love the comedy cellar. You know what I love about the comedy cellar? I love the wide variety of acts that they have on their weekends. On Saturday, we have four wonderful shows. At 7 o'clock, we have Tom Papa, Greg Geraldo, Nick DiPaolo, and Colin Quinn. At 9 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Colin Quinn, Greg Geraldo, and Tom Papa. At 11 o'clock, we have Nick DiPaolo, Colin Geraldo, fucking Who Gives a Fuck, and Alan Haby. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. I got one question. Who the fuck is Alan Haby? <laughs> Every six weeks I get that. I'd love to give you more spots, but Alan Havy is in town. Oh, well, shit, let's clear the fucking schedule. Alan Havy is in town. Jesus Christ, by any chance did he bring Mark Cohen with him? It's a roast, man. I'm letting it go. You like it? Beautiful, beautiful. All right, fuck all of you, because this is still, we're at the halfway point. All right, I worked with the Sklar Brothers recently. I got one question for the Sklar Brothers. Do they both have to be up there? Is there any reason for both of them? Can't one of them just recite that awful material? <laughs> awful. And God, they're ugly. They're the answer to the question, what would happen if Jeff Ross fucked Mel Brooks? <laughs> I was talking about the Star Brothers. All right, uh, Tom Papa, I don't know if he's here. Tom Papa has a new show coming out this fall. Evidently, it takes place inside of Jerry Seinfeld's ass. <laughs> Orny Adams lives in the prostate and it's called Who Are These People Love My Ass? <laughs> what are you guys all getting a fucking guest star on it, you fucking sellouts? <laughs> Who makes fun of him? He has a deal. Uh, <laughs> where do you go from here? A couple more bridges. Colin Quinn is still here. God bless him. Colin, come on, round of applause for the one celebrity who's showing up here tonight. God bless him. Colin, I just have one question for you. Why are you still fucking here? You're at least twice as old as anybody here. No one cares about your take on the war in Iraq. And even if we did, we couldn't understand what the fuck you're saying, you fucking mushmouth hack. If you're gonna keep doing spots, at least take a fucking speech class. Somebody, you got your own show. Why are you still here? What do you think? Are you that tough crowd's like a stepping stone? You're 58 years old. This is it for you. It's not going any higher. Go on the road like Gallagher too, except instead of smashing the watermelons, he's gonna eat them. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, which brings me to this tub of shit. Patrice O'Neill. What I've loved about him is he's fat and arrogant. It's the oddest combination I've ever seen in my life. Like, he refuses 
to do comic view. He actually feels that he's above it. I will not do comic view. Patrice, your whole act is perfect for that show. You do 11 minutes, you pretend to talk about Russia, and then you do 52 minutes of pussy jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and you won't do comic view? I mean, Patrice, you're so comic. You got a deal for your own TV show. You blew all your money on a pinky ring, a used Cadillac, and football jerseys. <laughs> and you won't do comic view? Patrice, you are comic view. <laughs> Why didn't you at least get your fucking teeth fixed? <laughs> Trish, you have the worst teeth in entertainment. None of them match. I worked in a dental office for five years. I've never seen anybody with a molar in the front. <laughs> you have no business having a headshot. Howard Feller called. He wants his old teeth back. <laughs> Look at the space between his front teeth. He looks like a fat 50 cent. <laughs> Poor 50 cent. <laughs> I'm just fucking with them. <laughs> I do. I gotta do a disclaimer. I'm getting the most fucking groans here. And Patrice is fat. Patrice has that awful fat person bad breath where you don't know if it's coming, the smell's coming from his mouth or one of the folds in his neck. <laughs> Patrice's breath smells worse than Jim Norton's chest. <laughs> I make fun of Patrice only because I'm jealous of his career. Seriously, he's doing great. He just booked the lead in the, to the sequel to Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> Patrice, you really do. You really do look like an out-of-shape gorilla. You look like that gorilla at the zoo that doesn't want to fuck anymore. All right, I was playing with all of you. God bless all of you. I love you, Patrice. I've for 10 years. Seriously, man. I do anything for you. Thank you. Billy Burr. Billy. Uh, Billy, no, he, he's not going next. He doesn't just fucking walk in like he's a celebrity and go next. No, let Lingo. No, fuck him. The SC doesn't care if you get back to the club. Calm the fuck down. They're here. Shut up, I can't see you. Fucking a big hand for Billy Burr. Uh, what's that? Oh, Billy went up. Look at Billy. Look at Billy. He's shaking. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Manny. I'm sorry, Esty. Sit down. Hey, stupid, sit down. You are done. Just thank God you didn't trash anybody at BBQs or you wouldn't be working this weekend. <laughs> Him, Billy, look at him—he's he's so fucking happy. Surprised you came up here without your FUBU clothing. <laughs> fucking failed in both fucking. Oh, so, no, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> oh shit! I saw Johnny Lambert. How you doing, man? When did you get back into comedy? <laughs> Jesus Christ, talk about relics. That fucker looks up to D.F. Sweedler. <laughs> <laughs>